And now, something completely different. Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you live just outside. The- I like to think balding is just God's way of saying, now let's see you get laid. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? What I'd really like to do is put the greatness of this man in perspective. The halo of community has a lot to be thankful for, having you as a spokesperson. You mean you just call this guy up? About life and about reality. And now, America's number one reality radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Bald Truth. Hey guys, welcome to the program, 888-659-3727. Uh, we are on time today, right? Since you set the show at 2.30. About life and about reality. And now, what happened? America. That was really weird. My, yeah, my volume was pulling in the sound from the video on Ball Truth Talk, or just posted. Okay. Ah. Uh, you can hear me now, right? I can hear you now. Everything is absolutely fine. Glad that you got it all together. Um, You know, it's interesting. I was sitting down with Paul Rose at uh, this year's 8th annual annual, FUE Europe Conference in Manchester. Good night. night. And um, he was like, you know, Spencer, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to me that you do this all the time. You have no papers, no script or anything like this. I'm like, Paul, I've been doing the same fucking show for 21 years doesn't change the only thing that changes are the dirty players of this industry it's exactly the same shit for the last 21 years most of the people in the industry are scumbags the the majority of people who are selling products or services are selling shit that doesn't work 99 percent of all products and services that claim to stop prevent or treat hair loss are bullshit if you're given a guarantee or a hundred percent money back guarantee you're probably buying a guaranteed piece of crap. And surgery is a last resort. I love that line. That's, that's it. So when I sit down and I interview doctors, it's about the same thing, just in a different era, you know, different time period. And when I sit down and talk to you guys, it, what, what, what am I, what am I going to bring up? What am I going to change? What do I need? What, no, yeah, if there's something that's brand new, I may have to, well, actually, I can't even look at my monitor. I would probably have to put it on a piece of paper. Um, have so many screens open. But this is hair loss. It's the hair loss business. And the hair loss business was built on bullshit. That's it. That's all you have to know. If you're watching YouTube right now, <clears throat> if you are watching some other guy's YouTube tube channel, Jesus Christ, <laughs> God almighty. If you're watching someone else's YouTube channel and they're telling you about the cure for hair loss or they're selling, you know, their caps or whatever it is, that, that, that's what it's about, man. Just understand that. Who's trying to call me? I don't know. I hear that in the background. In the program. But that's what it's about, guys. That's all it is. That's all it is. You could be fans of people and you can watch your YouTube channels and be like, oh, wow, this is really great information. It is all fucking bullshit. And any of the good information that's being uh, put out there by some of the guys online and these other and blogs and you know, all these guys are in the industry. You know, it's just regurgitated stuff either from us or that's just already in the, in the public domain. Yeah. That's it. I actually hear people read stats directly from the American Hair Loss Association verbatim, which is fine, but full sentences and paragraphs when they are talking about different subjects of hair loss or stuff that uh, a WebMD licensed from the American Hair Loss Association. And I'm thinking, not that they can reference that, but you know, give it an attribution, man. At least let the people that you're reading this to know that you're not, that this isn't your information, that you're reading it from a website. Yeah, like according to the American Hair Loss Association. That's it. That's all you have to do. I don't even give a shit about, you know, there's no um, financial incentive for us to get the credit. But that's just, you know, honest, in quotes, journalism. 
None of this is made up. It's all been done before. I don't know. Some of the stuff out there isn't actually journalism. It's just some guy, like like on YouTube. Like, um, I, I, remember, <laughs> I, remember, I remember watching one guy on YouTube, and he's talking about different types of procedures or facts about hair loss. And, and I can see that he's reading. There's actually, like, his, his face is kind of lit up. I, I saw screen. that. I, I, thought, I think he, I had another video you're talking about. He was reading um, the the description of whatever he's talking about directly from the glossary on my website. Yeah. And I thought, that sounds familiar. Wait a minute. I wrote I that. Wrote that. <laughs> That's on my website. It's like, what the hell, dude? And look, the, the, it's, it's, the information is out there for public consumption. It's great. But when people start to utilize this information and then uh, on the back end or at the bottom – of their screen or whatever they're selling you a product or a service God, just my advice is just stop watching that bullshit man if you want to buy a laser cap for instance do what morty did either go to a doctor who's you selling it and i don't necessarily advise that either but no one has anything special that is on YouTube. They do not. There's nothing special about their laser caps. All you have to do is go to Alibaba or wherever, whatever, buy them in bulk. Uh, I've been offered um, to work with companies where I can get them for 2 to $5 a piece, 270 diodes or 240 to 270 diodes. They sell it for seven, 700 bucks, $600. Why don't I do that? Maybe I'm the idiot. You actually just gave me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Good video. I mean, yeah, I, I need to. No, I already did a video on lasers, but um, no, you, you gave me. I, I need to make a note of this real quick. Actually, uh, let's see. Look, I am contacted by companies all the time from China who want, and, and they would give me a greater discount as far as, you know, they know that uh, that I would have the credit and that I, I would buy in bulk. It would cost me nothing, plus packaging. Plus, that includes packaging. I could have a black helmet, a white helmet. I could have a cap. I could have specific caps made with the right, you know, the same level of diodes that you find in, uh, you know, the stuff that doctors are selling for $3,000. No, I, maybe, I, we'll, I, maybe we'll put something together where the guys who want these caps, you know, we'll put something in the kitty, support the show for some degree, and you can get the cap for, you know, 100 bucks. I was actually thinking that. It's like, why not... Why not just sell them for two hundred bucks? It's like, it's but, but I don't even sell. I don't even need to put any money in my pocket. Just like you know what, we're sitting here busting our balls. Support the production. You know, yeah. support what we're doing, and we'll get you the exact same. Li Give us the specifications that you're looking for. We'll get it for you. It's that easy. I, I can see the emails now. <laughs> can, can uh, you with flames? <laughs> we can we can make it happen that'll cost you yeah. extra though cost you extra skull and crossbones cost you extra cost you extra she don't don't say skull and crossbones triple eight six five nine three seven two seven that's triple eight six five nine three seven two seven this is our friday night broadcast uh, or friday afternoon broadcast of the ball truth always a special edition it's even more special now that Joe's equipment keeps just breaking down and not working. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. I need, I need to turn off my overhead lights real quick. Go ahead. Switch cameras. I will. Very special edition. So, guys, we have completely open lines because everyone who was tuned in before dropped out. They were holding on for like 20 minutes, and they dropped off the line. So if you want to speak to us, we are live. 
Phone number is 888-659-3727. That's 888-659-3727. And if you don't want to speak to us, then I leave. We do the show live for you guys. Uh, it's a lot easier for me and for Joe to just sit around, bullshit, put up a podcast, interview some doctors, you know, get some uh, of, of some of these guys who are providing false hope through, I hate to say that. I mean, they are trying to find effective treatments and cures for hair loss, but uh, nothing will be coming down the pike that is going to be really effective, in my view, uh, for quite a long time. I know there's some exciting news on, on certain blogs and stuff like that. We avoid that, um, you know, with Ball Truth Talk message forums, we had a huge, very vibrant and robust section, active section on future treatments and all that shit. And I had to make an executive decision. Too many people, now great, the traffic was unbelievable. And then other forums decided to do the same thing, which is fine. Um, but I had to make a decision. Do I worry about or am I concerned about what other forums are doing and let them get all the traffic? Or do I shut this shit down because too many people are spending their days. They are now vitamin D deficient because they're indoors all fucking day on the forums. Which causes them to lose more hair. To causing them to lose more hair and stressing them out in hopes that they're going to get some news from one of these companies, that some meetings, there's going to be Angela Cristiano or somebody's going to say something at one at a meeting and they're going to send forum guys to, uh, to record interviews. It's all fucking, it's basically essentially link bait. That's all it is. I'm sorry if I sound cynical, but I've been doing this for 21 years, and I, ca I came in at a time when hair cloning was literally, at least according to the, those who were promoting it, they claimed literally five years away. I thought this would be over. I'm not saying this. there's, there's not going to be a possibility that we will hear something on the news one day and it'll be a eureka moment. But you are not going to find it in a message forum. You're not going to find it on a blog. That's just the reality. If it makes guys feel better to spend their time obsessing about this, I understand it because I was one of those guys for many years, then, you know, I don't want to obviously take that away from them. You know, it's great that there's resources out there like this, but I don't want to pander to this audience. I think it's unfair to them, and I just think that it's something that is, um, I don't know. It just makes the whole situation that much more sad. Phone number is 888 Joe, you are back. Uh, so, look, we have enough of phone calls. So, you know, sorry that you took so long to set up, but I'm just going to call it a night. Good night. Let's just check the phones real quick. Yeah. I mean, no. if, it's not, if it's not happening, it's not happening. I got, I got, I got important things to do with my life. We we both do. It's Friday, 2.45. It is a perfect afternoon in Los Angeles for some day drinking. Which you know that I enjoy to do. I enjoy doing once in a while. I prefer day drinking that, more than evening drinking, actually. Well, I prefer day drinking because it ensures a nice night of sleep. Yes. It makes it that, that much more enjoyable. That's true. But sometimes day drinking turns into some really crazy times. Like nutty, crazy times. Like the time I was in Manchester uh, a couple of weeks ago with Andrew Zarian, and we decided to drink Bloody Marys at 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, that's when you're supposed to drink them. You are supposed to drink them, but you're not supposed to have five. <laughs> And then I'm like, you know what? I'm worried about my bloat factor. I don't want to get too bloated from all the sodium. So let's switch to vodka and sodas. I was going to say switch to vodka. <laughs> yeah. So again, add another five. And then you're 10 deep. And the next thing you know, you're walking around Manchester with two 24-year-old guys who all they want to do is find another bar. 
and there's plenty that will serve you happily. Oh my God. They don't believe in alcoholism in the UK. It doesn't exist. They just ignore it. No, they're just like, <laughs> you're weak. <laughs> yeah. You know? You're not alcoholic. You're just weak. You're just weak. You just can't hang. I went to this yeah, bar. It was a chain of bars. I forgot the name of it. I got to say, you know, and they wanted me to experience, they wanted us to experience this because this is like, you know, a kind of a typical type of, so it was a, a very odd pub. Basically, you sat at tables, they had gambling machines. The place was carpeted, okay? Ugh. And you ordered your drinks through an app. And you order vodka and soda. It had no ice. It was in a glass like this fucking big. It looked like it was a water glass with lemon in it. And I'm thinking, you know what? When the day comes when I really want to hang myself, I'm going to the UK. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. You know, I guess coming from Southern California or being here for 20 years, it really gives you a little perspective on, on life, on what, what I want in my life. I thought, I thought you were going to share a, a, a nice little story about how they, they brought you in. Oh, you're from America. Great. Come, come. We need to show you traditional uh, pub fare and, uh, and give you an actual genuine British ale, which is different than like regular yeah. beer. I've done that. It's, yeah. It's good. Well, I've done, I, I've actually done that too. Uh, these are kids. This is like the new, this is like the new trend. This is what's happening there. And um, I did notice that a lot of the bars actually don't even have bar stools. And I was told the reason they don't have bar stools is because uh, they, people were falling off of bar stools on a regular basis. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was thinking about this, just visualize it. It's just like, you know, that's, that's called being 22. You know? That's true. But uh, I think in the UK, that's called being 44. <laughs> All right, guys, let's take this call. I have a feeling it's Nico. What's up, Nico? What's up, boys? How, How are you? Of course, the thing. No one's calling, so what the fuck? It's unbelievable. Why do we even do the show when that happens? I tell, Terrible. you know, it takes it takes Joe, you know, 45 minutes, and the stress level. I'm trying to be calm about it. I'm like, listen, it's no big deal, dude. Don't worry about it. F-bombs left and right. Son of a bitch. Yeah, and he's just, he's literally <laughs> pulling out the rest of his hair. Oh man! Yeah, well, well, I'm now. Gonna, Spencer's going to uh, open up the lines and and like make the the mic hot, and and start streaming. I'm not going to know it, and all you guys are going to hear me just losing my shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, dude, it's not cancer and it's not hair loss. Just chill. <laughs> you know, you guys are out of control. So what's happening, man? Ah, man, I'm just calling because no one else fucking was, and yeah, I'm keep. I'm apparently I'm in getting a little di vitamin D deficient. So, um, I'll head out shortly. Let me well, ask you a question, Nico. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Yes, sir. You're you're a hair transplant patient, so you you can you can relate to this better than a non hair transplant patient. Okay. What do you think? What do you think of this scenario? You go all into right. a clinic, just any any random clinic, mm -hmm. and you're interested in having FUE surgery. Right. You have your FUE surgery. Or, or you, you sign on, you go into that clinic and the doctor draws in your hairline, pats you on the back and says, good luck and walks away. And the technicians are doing the entire procedure. Yeah, no chance. Fucked up. He didn't Good tell me. I mean, that doctor, that doctor didn't tell you ahead of time that he's not doing the surgery. Nothing on the doctor's website says that he's not doing the surgery. And there's zero indications across the board that he or she is not doing the surgery. So oh, you're even talking question, about the extraction. Okay, yeah, yeah. Question to you. Ethical or non-ethical? Terrible. Uh, unethical. Fucking, yeah, of course it's unethical. I mean, it doesn't even matter if the patient didn't do enough research. It's like there's just informed consent period about, like, how shit goes down, period. You know, it's just basic. It should be that yeah. basic. Well, I mean, unless there's a, a language barrier problem and you went to Turkey and you fucked yourself by doing that, but yeah, terrible. I don't know. In your well, own backyard. I, I, I was asked not to show these images. So I'm not going to, but I was uh, sent some images from uh, someone who was in Turkey and uh, essentially the person 
was just taking images of people walking around Istanbul with bandages mm -hmm. all in their, on yep. their, like it was everywhere. Someone posted something like that on Instagram recently, actually. They were, like, fascinated. Like, uh, they didn't even know much about the phenomena of hair transplantation, much less how big it is in Turkey. And they they took photo uh, pics of just people, just the tourist factor, everyone walking around. They're like, what the fuck is this? But, you know, when, when you, if you actually think about that, if you are a critical thinker, a logical person, and you see something like that, I mean, there are those who, you know, they're sheep. And they follow the leader and they figure, well, this must be okay. But mm -hmm. if, if there's anything that's doing that much volume, if it's not a piece of, if it's not electronic, if it's not an iPhone or some shit, I'm talking about if, it, if there's anything that's following, that, 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 that's growing to that capacity so quickly where people are flooding the streets with bandages. <laughs> I mean, how, you got to think, where's the quality control? Yeah. How is this even possible? Who, right. what kind of an idiot, sorry guys, what kind of an idiot would fall for this shit? And I'm not, you know, there's, and a lot of smart people do. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just so normalized there. You don't even have like an EMT going up being like, was there a terrorist attack I didn't know about? Or what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I, mean? I would be scared shitless. If I saw that, fuck yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Everyone's walking around, and, 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 the, and, and the type of bandages, I mean, they're just heavily padded, and then this, you know, in the back, and then this, you know, bandage around the scalp. It's like, yeah, we're going to walk around and see some fucking sights. Right. Then we'll go drinking on top of it. Right? Yeah, and then they're going to go drink, exactly. We're going to go drinking so that your fucking blood pressure and your, you know, your glucose can go through the fucking roof and your, your graphs are going to pop. Ugh. I can imagine how many uh, cases there are of people uh, the day after surgery walking around uh, Istanbul or, or Ankara or wherever, or even worse, being out of the city on a, on a tour bus and, and they have some sort of crash where, where their, uh, their blood pressure just drops because they, they you know, did something. And th this happens after hair transplant sometimes. Like I, I've seen it many times where patients come in the day after for a hair wash, they get up. They, they start walking for, towards the front front door and then they collapse. They literally pass out. I, I remember catching this guy that was like six foot five, 300 plus pounds. I had to catch this guy. I just saw him in the corner of my eye. That's a guy you let fall. That could uh, cause like yeah. a shoulder injury. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I caught him. No, I, I actually <laughs> I actually caught him in the right position. I ran it behind him and I squared up and I, I, I caught him the way I should have and I dragged his ass over to the couch. I don't, yeah. I, I don't want to risk a hernia. It, you know, I, I do my part in general. By getting everyone out of the way. Yeah. But, but, here, but here, here's the reality. I mean, most people, I would say, more people than you realize are dealing with some degree of lidocaine toxicity when they have lidocaine injected, that much lidocaine injected into their scalps. Uh, the biggest complaint, a lot of people just kind of feel like, wow, I jaw is a little numb or my teeth feel a little weird mm -hmm. that's lidocaine toxicity so even though it's it's reasonable and it happens on a regular basis uh, if your body's gone through that shock and you've had just had lidocaine the day before and you're out not eating well eating a lot of shitty food and drinking fuck man yes yeah that goes back to what you're saying about sort of um, my situation when I had uh, just came off fucking, you know, Klonopin and all that shit. It's like, oh, you know, there was no phone call the day after. And I know I fucked up having my shit on a Friday, but there was no like, uh, how you feeling? <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? what's going on? Sort of the, with the yeah. basic sort of shit. Um, yeah. They were like, it was more like next. Who's next? Dude, I go in to get room? a cleaning and my dentist's office calls awesome you know that's the way it's got to be yeah doctors are fucked man i don't know oh dude man in general i mean i'm not gonna say in general but let's just put it this way there is a, a significant percentage of doctors who are so fucked up and i don't know if it has to do with you know the fact that they were so involved in the books for such a long period of time and they lack a certain uh you know, uh, basic 
uh, social sense and social protocol and understanding. You know, they're kind of like socially net. That could be part of it. And then there's the God complex. You add that, you add that in. And then, you know, I don't know. There's, there's, there's other factors, obviously, as well. But I, I don't get it. To me, <clears throat> if I'm going to treat a patient or someone's going to come into my <clears throat> facility, I would make sure that everything, soup to nuts, was as perfect as possible. Yeah, and it, it doesn't take that much work. Yeah. It really doesn't. Yeah. It actually takes more yeah. work to try and hide this, this you know, yeah. whatever the issue may be, than to just do yep. it the right way. You know? Right. It's just a defensive thing, not going and deal with that stress, of course, just by nature. Like, oh, it's going to go well. We do these all the time. Like you guys but let me, let me ask you another talk. question. So um, sure, along the same lines of what I was saying with, um, uh, you know, informed consent, like making sure that you know who's doing your procedure. Mm -hmm. um, how would you feel about this is an A-B comparison, okay? So mm -hmm. you go into clinic A. And they say, you know what, um, nothing to worry about. We, we have uh, a performance guarantee. We have a growth guarantee. If anything doesn't grow uh, reasonably, then, then we'll, we'll touch it up. No charge, free. Mm -hmm. Would you appreciate that? Or would you appreciate more Clinic B saying, you know what, um, we have a great track record. You know, you can, you've looked at our results online. We've got all these videos, all these all these patients, we, we really document clearly. We, we hope you recognize that. But we're the first to tell you that there are no guarantees in this because this is surgery, okay? So you're always going to run the risk of maybe a little bit more scarring than you were hoping for, you know, strip or FUE. Uh, maybe, you know, it might not grow 100%. If it does, then we're happy to look at it uh, and see if there's something we can do. But just understand that this is surgery and you are taking a risk. You're, this is, you, you might not have the perfect result. You might not be 100% happy. What would you appreciate more, clinic A or clinic B and their approach? Well, clear, clearly clinic B, so they know, so they lay the law and tell you that shit can go wrong, obviously. A free touch up on top of it would be nice if it didn't go right, you know what I mean? But obviously just clinic B just lays the law and says there are no guarantees, period, about how shit goes. You can get fucked yeah. up. That's kind of obvious. That's, that's, um, that's, that's part of the, the, the topic of, of uh, today's show is, you know, hair, hair transplant or, or hair surgery and uh, ethics. Epic. Yeah. Because um, this, is, this is happening all over the place. Like even clinics I used, to, I used to work for, you know, there's a guarantee of some sort. And I, I don't know if there is now, but there used to be. And I've never felt, I've never felt comfortable with that because it's, a, it's the, the way I look at it is it's simply a way awesome. to dismiss doubt. It's a way to dismiss uh, inquiry and questions about uh, very real situations that not only can happen, but do happen. If anyone gives you a guarantee, you walk away. Right. Period. Okay. That, I mean, that, is, that is my mantra. You get it. Except it, for one thing, guarantee of a, of a best effort. That, yeah, that's the only absolutely. Thing. That's the only guarantee that they, they can mean, provide. Interestingly, I saw two different... I'm, you know, on social media, I saw and YouTube, two di different, sorry, got to say it, IAHRS IA, docs, one on Instagram, Joe, you, you know them well. Well, you think um, they're immune? They were, you think they're immune to this shit? I try to talk to them all the time about I, it. Dude, I, and one has said, one advertises as like a really good, typically was typically known for their strip. They even say in one of their Instagram posts, FUE, scarlet surgery. I'm like, well, no. And I just don't understand that. And then another one. Wait a second. Like, Wait a second. Where are you going? Who is that? Can't, I, I don't want to go there at the moment, but go ahead. I kind of gave a little clue. Joe knows him well. Been there, was there a long time. Known for strip. Right? Really? Really? I, I swear, one of their Instagram posts, a couple Recently? months back. A couple months back. A couple back. months. I, I have to look back at it, but for sure, said, if you eat scarlet surgery. And I was like, really? What? From you guys? Like... I, I don't know. And then just somebody else on uh, YouTube, they were talking about how strip for sure causes, if you're diffuse thinner, at least on the sides, is not the way to go. And, and I could see that, but they were also promoting how FUE is a better choice if you're diffuse on the sides. I'm like, well, I don't get it. I mean, these are, you know, IHRS stocks. So Look, I'm going I'm to tell you something, like, and, and this is the uh, reality. You know, when I founded the IHRS, 
it was a lot easier for us to say, okay, these are the good doctors and these are the bad or the not so great doctors. And they were utilizing, you know, doing uh, follicular unit transplantation. They had full time staffs. They were u- utilizing microscopes. They understand. They they understood, you know, hair angulation, and you know, it was it was a completely. It was almost a different procedure. Okay, and there were just mm-hmm. different moving parts. Uh, FUE threw the game off completely for everybody, and especially for the latecomers into FUE. So now that the market is really saturated with, and some people don't like them to say this, you know, turnkey device guys, and you know, the 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 hair transplant uh, uh, tourism and all the stuff, people are fucking desperate. Even members, guys who are in good standing for many years, who are part of what we do. Uh, they're hiring marketing companies who are putting this out there because yeah. they feel they need to compete. They're competing on sites yeah. like Real Self. You know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this publicly, and I thought it was interesting. We were at the talk. I was at uh, uh, on my panel uh, at FU Europe. Uh, at you know, very well respected IHS member uh, who's also very involved with the ISHS and and other organizations. Um, I'll say his name, Jeff Epstein, um, got up there and said how, um, you know, companies like Real Self are going to start distinguishing, you know, real hair transplant doctors from all the rest. And I'm thinking to myself, are you fucking kidding me, man? Do you really think that's going to happen? The fact that you guys feel the need to compete with fucking dentists on sites like this, you know, you, you know from the very beginning, and this, is go- this goes across the board, IHS, non-IHS, so many doctors in this field have supported everything that has brought this field down, including some of the original online terrorists of this fucking field, you know, supporting really bad shit and, and, and message forums that, you know, sadly have caused a tremendous amount of confusion. Uh, in some cases, their colleagues have been extorted, uh, defamed, all that stuff. And, you know, their their thing is well if it gets me leads nah, so what if he's a murderer whatever <laughs> it doesn't fucking make a difference and I give uh, this guy Tom Siri a tremendous amount of credit for creating real self and just you know running it like a business but that's what it is and yeah. if anybody believes that a company of that magnitude right now will really alienate other dollars from coming in. They're they're fucking foolish. <laughs> they're fucking yeah. foolish. It's not going to happen. Maybe they'll give them some sort of weird distinction somewhere in the corner, which won't make a fucking difference to anybody because everyone is just price comparison any uh, comparing anyway. Yeah, I mean, fuck, man. I, it's just uh, I get the competition factor, and people are just you know maybe who are typically a strip clinic, really good strip clinic you know, sort of jumped on the FUE and, and, and does a really good FUE, you're right. They really have to though, scope out whoever's working their uh, social media too. It's like to say scarlet surgery for FUE when they're really renowned. Been a period and I, I, I have a guy who is, oh, is one, one of the leaders. I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to give you his position. But one of the leaders of this black market campaign nonsense. And, you know, this is like a year ago and I, I went to his website and, you know, he's talking about preaching ethics and, and uh, you know, all the typical bullshit, you know, the holy and now bullshit, and stated clearly that he was double board certified uh, physician and he was boarded. He was board certified by the American Board of Hair Restoration Surgery. This was on his website. We had the screenshot. You could see on the Wayback Machine. Now, it was brought up to him in a very innocuous way without calling him out on our our private uh, hair transplant community uh, forum where, you know, the industry is. And all of a sudden, it disappeared. All of a sudden, it just it disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. This guy is preaching like everyone else is, is, is unethical. It's all fucking bullshit. Here's the bottom line. If you don't do your own research, and if you really, you know, we, we bring together what we believe to be the guys who have the most consistent results. That's it. I am now, and I made this decision, I think I told you guys, we're evolving the IHRS into a consumer educational or education foundation. Um, we are broadening our scope. And the, the, the key is to give you guys as much information as possible, 
not only about the physicians who are supporting this or who we support, but about the reality of the industry on that site as well. And whoever doesn't support that, you know are the bad guys. It's going to be as easy as that. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, one more comment, then I just had a question for you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still fascinated by the fact that, you know, my surgeon said what he saw uh, in, with me and my problems. He said, oh, it looks like normal hair loss, whereas my primary and derm said, oh, it looks like alopecia areata or some sort of thing. It's like, how is that huge discrepancy fucking not noticed within a transplant surgery? I just don't get it. Just fascinating. I, I don't get it either, and you know, I guess part part of it, part of it, as far as you know, I'm concerned is you know, my job was always to just find the guys and work with those who were doing consistently good hair transplants, and also yeah. who we believed, and some of these at the time because there wasn't this type of competition, were turning the right patients away, who were able to make proper diagnoses, you know, um, okay. but in the end when people are worried about paying for their boats and their yeah. Mercedes Benz payments it's and their, yeah. Yeah, their kids tuition or their bars or restaurants or whatever other businesses they're involved in, shit just changes, man. Fucked. So fucked up. It's wrong, boys. It's wrong. It is wrong. More undercover, more undercover dot types. Well, we, we're going to do that. And, you know, you're going to see the IHS evolve a lot in the next six months. Uh, this meeting really kind of catapulted that direction. And we're actually going through applications right now. And the bottom line is, look, you guys have to support what we say, not only on this program, but it's going to be on the site, period. If it's too much for you, if you think it's going to sway patients from having surgery, then, you know, too bad. In my view, and I said this at the meeting, you're either going to be part of the part of the solution or you're going to be seen mm -hmm. as part of the problem. Yeah. That's it. Not you're just going to be named or called out on fucking ball truth. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know, either you support what we do and this isn't, it, you know, I mean, this isn't like a, uh, an ultimator. It's not so, like extortion. It's, it's basically oh, no, saying no, no. you got to fucking come to, come to the table, man. Step it up. You got to step it up. Right. Fuck. All right, Nico, always uh, a pleasure, man. Hey, man, hey, one, one question. A quick question. Yeah. Where, where did you, uh, where did you see that video of me doing the scalp exercises? Oh, um, just earlier. I saw it on YouTube. I was looking at scalp laxity exercises, and I checked laxity exercises before on YouTube and never saw you pop up. And it wasn't through uh, H&W or anything, but it did have the H&W logo, but it said um, med, like a, like a medical, not spa. Let me see if I can find it real they quick. They stole your shit. I saw I saw a video of you doing these exercises, and there was another video with, with like these guys throwing a medicine ball, and and that's how that's how old that video was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll look for it. Hey, real quick question though, and I'll see if I can find. Oh, the the video that you're on, Joe, is under Medical Hair Restoration Clinic from seven years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Never saw it before. It's weird. Hair looks good though, man. Fucking awesome! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. That was uh, I th I think I recorded this uh, nine years ago. Mhm. Mm but somebody else posted it. It's weird. Maybe maybe longer. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hey, so I was just gonna ask quickly, like, what's a good um way to, without over drying the scalp, getting the scalp really clean? Like, so I I, I know you've mentioned this before, Joe, about. Sometimes if you put in things like topic and you don't wash it out the, the same day or same evening, you can get like low grade inflammation from that kind of thing. Or put in uh, before, you continue, with the, before you continue with the question, that's the, 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 um, the context of that is if you, if you do this every day and you yeah, like yeah. leave it in for weeks, like, if, and yes, there are people that do that. Not if you yeah. leave it overnight and, or even a couple of days. No, that's okay. two different things. So I'll make that clear to everyone else listening. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. But what's a, what is a good way to clean the scalp without over drying your hair? Besides washing every day or skipping a day if you're having, if it is drying out. You know what I mean? Like if you're having. If, you're, if you are using energy. concealer or just in general? I guess either or. I don't know. However you want to answer it. With concealer, you can't, like, there's only one way, soap and water period. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Water. Okay. Um, 
in general. Like um, yeah, yeah, go for it. In general, uh, without adding any sort, well, they're dry shampoos, but I don't know if they're actually cleaning the scalp. Um, actually, there's been, there was a, a story recently saying that dry shampoos can actually accelerate hair loss. Well, there you go. So, uh, uh, so if you're concerned about a dry scalp, I'm going to take this from Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, my suggestion is you shampoo, get all that shit out of your hair, and then condition after you shampoo, which is what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. the problem is, for me, I usually tell people to condition first and then shampoo right. because you don't have that heaviness and that weightedness to your hair. Um, mm -hmm. So you can try. You can try conditioning first and see if that helps, and then shampoo. Because the conditioner right. will help to, to wash the topic out. Right on. Um, yeah, my doc had recommended just anything, especially shampoo without alcohol, but he said, you know, head and shoulders, dandruff shampoo, but I've been using that shit way too much, I think, and it's like my hair is fucking crunchy as fuck. It's weird. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would actually try, right. try to condition a move, man. I mean, even, even okay. try to condition before you shampoo. See if that works. Okay. All right? All right, cool. All right, boys, let me, get, right, let me let you go, and thanks right. for the talk. And, we got a uh, lot of calls. Call you know back. we got a lot of calls. Awesome. Like, well, All right. <laughs> Take it easy. Thanks. Right. See you, buddy. Bye. Phone number is 888 um, Friday edition of The Ball of Truth. And I'm, I'm going to take this call in a second, guys, so hold on. But I, you know, I have a lot of respect for Jeff Epstein. I happen to like him, and we've worked together for a very long time. And I think that he's motivated to help to affect change. Um, he actually got me together with this guy from Real Self many, many years ago. I did not have a great experience uh, attempting to uh, do something with them at one point, which was in plastic surgery. It was, a, it was actually a really... Um, it was just very telling of the entire industry in general. And that's why I kind of stepped back from that side of things. And I've been researching for like six years and kind of doing uh, pilot shows with Plastic Surgery Live. Uh, I did have the opportunity to jump in right away. But I decided, you know what, there's something not right here, man. You know? Yeah. Um, but what I can say is this. There is no fucking way, there is no way that any good is going to come of what they're trying to do. That's all I'm saying. And as a matter of fact, it may just be and create another revenue uh, stream, which is great. Listen, these guys are killing it. And you know what? It's a business. That's what they should do. That's how I feel about it. That's what they got in business for. That's what they should do. We're the only idiots that are out there in my view, that are really fighting to, to get the truth out there and turning down a lot of money. And I'm True. a bigger idiot than you. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, the ISHRS guys, you just have to just stop, 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 and just do what you do best. You guys put really nice, good meetings together you're a scientific-based organization, and, a, and, a, and a tr basically it's a trade organization, in my view. Um, stick to that, man. And then work with people who can actually affect some change. I know Joe has to be quiet. But I don't. Just listen. I don't have to be quiet. Because the industry is being destroyed. And the more that you guys continue to try to pound the wrong direction and go down the wrong path, and everyone seems to be going down different paths. I mean, I heard what Jeff Epstein said the other day. I was just like, holy Jesus Christ. You guys really think that's going to be something that's going to be a positive? The naivete, like I said in my talk, you know, the apathy and the, 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 the naivete of some of those in this industry, it's just many people in this industry, it's mind blowing. Everyone has a voice and you control the direction of this field. You can either control it so that people like Nico don't get fucked up and don't have to go through what they're going through. 
and then all these guys are on walking around bandages in foreign countries. Well, it's not Turkey is not a foreign country for Turks, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you know what you're saying. None of it has to happen. It could stop literally six months. Complete turnaround. Whatever. There is a way. There is a way. It's it's real simple. And my wish, my my hope, nay, my dream is that suddenly people will wake up. And when I say people, I mean doctors and uh you know medical professionals are also uh, industry politicians wake up to the fact that anything and everything that that they're trying to do to change the industry into what they feel it should be, which ironically benefits only them, right, right, uh, is foolish, and it is a massive, incredibly large waste of time energy and money because nothing that they're doing or or going to be doing are going to be doing will make even the slightest dent in this overall issue that they're that we are all talking about Dude, i said it and i really believe it um what they are being handed to them by the cosmetic surgery tourism all this crazy shit that's going on the turnkey you know, practices that are popping up, they're being handing, handed a gift. There has never been an easier time to distinguish themselves collectively from all of these other guys than there is today. What we accomplished in, two, in 1998 to 2001, actually it was about to 2000, but up to 2001, in, in about two and a half years, we completely changed this field. This new hair transplant industry, you guys will take a call in a second. This new norm of the hair transplant industry is built on an even weaker house of cards than the original one. Most of these guys aren't really invested. They maybe invest some, some, you know, a few dollars, but they're not emotionally invested in hair transplant surgery. It is so easy to knock them off these perches especially when you're dealing with cosmetic surgeons or, or plastic surgeons or, or um, uh, facial plastic and reconstructive guys who may not be that interested in it but just want to ancilla ancillary income flow, they're used to buying fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, dollars 70000 $100,000 laser devices that are collecting dust because they're, they're on to the next one. It, they, it doesn't mean shit to them. Yeah, it's just another day. Yeah, and you guys are just all cowering in fear about, you know, all these, you know, neograft and all these small footprint devices and these robots and all this stuff, you have the clear advantage. It's actually, it's interesting to watch. You know, I, I watch it and I, I just kind of just watch everything and I just, I listen to what the doctors are saying and, and watch the IHS run in circles and play whack-a-mole and have these conference calls and all this bullshit. I got to just think to myself, Jesus, I am really lucky. I'm in an evergreen field. These shit, these guys never are going to be able to fix this. I'm going to have to do, and we're going to have to do what we have to do. And there will be a segment of the market that will be fixed. And my goal will be then to get as many people as possible to the safe side. That's the best that, I, that we can do. And those that want to thrive in this field are going to have to be on that side. And those who choose not to will either have to find another profession or just jump in with all the, the dentists and all these other guys. And, you know, <laughs> I, was, I, I put up one ad and guys, I'm sorry to take your call, but I'm on a rant. Put up one ad on, on, on a Facebook like a year ago by one of these black market guys. Essentially, he's offering a thousand dollars off hair transplants. Like it's a coupon. 
These are your fucking leaders, guys. Let's take a call. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's the Thunder from Down Under, Graham from Melbourne, Australia. How's that for an <laughs> intro, guys? Graham, what's happening, man? I, I have to actually get an intro for you. I have to get maybe like the Australian National Anthem or some shit. I think well, you should I'll get a clip of uh, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Oh, no, son, it has to be Thunderstruck from um, ACDC. They're probably <laughs> the best thing to come out of Australia. Listen, if I was able to, to play that without um, YouTube clamping down on us, I would play it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know you love a bit of comedy, so I had to throw it in there. Yeah, so what's happening, man? How are you? Oh, good, good. Um, Doc McGee, you know who it is now, Spencer? Doc McGee? Yeah. I, I oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thank you for sending that to me. And he, I thought, he was yeah, like, how can you not know who Doc McGee is? Yeah. Uh, and the funny thing is, yeah. he's had a hair transplant about 10 years ago. With all the money in the world he's got, he's had a hair transplant, and it doesn't look that great. So everyone out there, make sure you have a look. Well, and that's the thing. It doesn't, we, matter, it doesn't matter how much money you have. I mean, look at poor Nicolas Cage. Look what, look what was done to him. Yes. Yes. Terrible. I know, the guy that originally, I know the guy that originally did it, and he used to brag about it. First of all, you know, he's violating, uh, well, this is even before HIPAA, but he's violating, you know, physician-patient confidentiality by letting me, letting me know all the celebrities that he worked on. And I got to tell you, I probably wouldn't put that on my shingle because his work and the work of many other celebrities that he claimed to have done is, I mean, it, there's no way it didn't adversely affect this guy's life. 100%. Yeah. I'm just looking it up right now. And what about, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Steven Seagal's head. Um, well, I would say that oh ba based on my um, expert opinion, even though I'm not a physician, uh, he had tried some, had some work done, and uh, the rest of it's painted, painted. It's like basically spray painted. Looks, looks, um, I'm not here to bag anyone, but I feel sorry for those guys because they're the guys that went in thinking, like you always talk about, that they were going to come out the other side looking better. And this is what the problem is in the industry and from everyone, even yourself, Joe, you know, you've been through it. Now, I think you've said you've had up to, you know, nine operations to get it where it is now. The average person can't afford to do that or isn't in the know to do that and if you right. and this is this is what all the young people i still feel like i'm 20 years old going to losing their hair sure you know, i feel like that guy yeah. i i can remember seeing the men's magazine before the internet and spencer an article from you was in there you were the first guy that were relating back that you were giving all the information out on hair loss that was back in Probably the early '90s. It was some magazine I picked off. It was, late, it was probably the, probably the late '90s. But so it was in an Australian magazine. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think it was like a one of those men's magazines. You know, they love throwing it up every six months. Men, a cure. Men, yeah, it, it was probably like Austra Australian men's health. Yeah, I mean, in the late '90s, I was fucking killing it, man. The radio show was like it was bigger than life. We came out of nowhere, and every magazine. I mean. A lot of my original press, if you see stuff on the ball truth, like GQ and, uh, you know, Men's House, I mean, every single major magazine picked this up because it was like, I was the only freak who was doing it, you know? Yeah. So it was a, it was, but the, the sad thing is it really goes to show you how powerful the marketplace is. And also the fact that there's hundreds of thousands of men worldwide waking up every day for the first time realizing that they're losing their hair they didn't pick up that magazine because they had no interest at that time so they missed that article that's why the internet's so important and that's why we have to really you know the old school guys like me and joe are now focusing on trying to get the message out there in a bigger way online because that that's the only way we're going to do with the continuity of message oh for sure and i'll tell you how powerful it is as you know i've been using the topical finasteride 
and minoxidil. And even myself, a nobody, I've had people messaging me on Instagram. I've had people messaging me on YouTube asking me, you know, where are you getting it from? What are you doing? And all this, that, sure. and the other. Because they've seen the photos. They've probably watched your show and thought, geez, this guy's onto something that's working. Um, and the couple of two got the two guys mainly on YouTube that you know, which aren't doing anything wrong, but you know, I could get on there on YouTube with my friendly Australian accent and start promoting what I'm doing and then start flogging bottles off for $150 a bottle. Dude, you would, I would kill probably it. Probably clean up. You would. I would probably clean up. Yeah, but here, here's the reality is that you are doing something that's actually benef- truly benefiting you. You know, so, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a horrible thing if you decided to do something like that, you know, especially if it was legal. I could, exactly. I could sell out and do that, and that's what these people do. They build up this, this I suppose you'd call it a fan base, and yeah. then the next thing they, they know they're selling their – their special shampoo. I wash my hair with a bar of soap of all things. When I feel like I'm lazy, I wash it with soap. Yeah. I don't care. It does not make any difference to hair loss. And that, that's actually I, true. I was, and I was the young guy, the unexperienced guy thinking, I've got to go out and buy the $30 bottle of shampoo because this is, this is going to be better than the $8 bottle of Pantene, you know, but, now, as I'm wi- older and wiser, I've realized what works and what doesn't work. And there's only about three things on the market that will work. Well, Unless you want to rip your head apart with a micro needle. And, um, yeah, but we won't go into that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there, there's a, for, for years, first of all, I, I've always been a believer, and I used to say this on the air, the, the cheapest shampoo is fine. Everyone is worried about sulfates and sulfides and, and you know these 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 detergent agents, these cleaning agents that are, you know are used in shampoos to basically create suds. Hair loss is on the rise. Less people are using those shampoos than ever before. Everyone's trying to buy some sort of naturally based shampoo, sulfide-free shampoo. Um, there has never been any evidence ever where there was a causal effect of you know buying inexpensive, cheap you know shampoo with these detergents in it that exacerbated or caused hair loss in any way. When I read this stuff, and it's just a mantra that's on blog after blog after blog, and even in the mainstream, I'm just like, Jesus. It's just, that's just, you know, it's really just all about marketing. Now, I happen to use a shampoo that is, um, you know, free of these agents uh, because I like the shampoo. But for years, most of my life, Whatever was, you know, in the bathroom I used. That's it. Does not make a difference. Will not cause hair loss. So, yeah, man, you're, listen. I realized after doing this for 21 years, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do except help those who find us. I think you're going to have to rename your show. Not, don't call it the ball truth anymore. You've got to call it the ball business because that's what it is. It's about making money, and it's not about the honesty of giving people the result. And that's what you were telling, you were saying to your last call, I think it was Nico, about the guarantees of the results you'll get. It's the bold business. Well, I, I actually, I can't, I can't give this away, but I, I've been asked to participate and actually do a documentary around my work and what, what I do. And it's, it's similar to what you're talking about. And, um, yep. But again, it's going to be one movie. It's great. I'm going to be in a movie. That's fucking great. That's wonderful. Is it going to change anything? Yeah. For those who take the time to watch it. And then there's going to be the cynics who are going to be like, oh, you know what? This guy's full of shit. I just want to get fixed. I'm going to go to Turkey. Yeah. You know, that's just the way that it is. This is a bizarre, you know, emotional purchase, whether it's shampoos, lotions, potions, or surgery. And... You know, if we were talking about cardiac surgery, it'd be a completely different story. But because the industry has commoditized this from its inception, this is the reality of what we're dealing with. And people don't want to take no for an answer. 
young guys don't want to think, you know what? The only reason they're talking about going to expensive physicians is because they're getting some sort of kickback. The only reason they're saying don't go and get a you know two dollar graft hair transplant is because it affects their bottom line. If it weren't possible to get a good two dollar hair transplant, then these guys would not exist. That's what these people actually think. But what they what they don't understand is every possible corner has to be cut in order to provide that service for such an inexpensive price. And some of those corners that are being cut are staffing, holding solution, instrumentation, uh, you know, uh, um, a, a sanitary environment. If I showed you, I'm not even gonna put this on the air, if I showed you some images that, that were put up on this WhatsApp group the other day from a patient who went, where was this surgery performed? This guy's pick. Uh, head was green. I think it was in uh, Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan or India, one, one of the two. And you have to understand that they have re some really great doctors in Pakistan, some really great doctors in India. But this guy had some sort of foreign body infection that no one could figure out. I had never seen a scalp uh, like this. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. You've seen, I've it. seen it. I don't know if you have. I mean, yeah. th this was like pustules, green, red. Go ahead. It wasn't that celebrity who got a hair transplant that went wrong, was it? No. No, this is, this is the... Whatever you think you've seen, you've never seen something like this. And... Yeah. And that's just... That's the reality. This is all real stuff that's happening. So, you know, Graham, you always... You write me through Instagram and, uh, you know, you're out there and you're supporting the truth. But it's a hard gig, man. It's a hard gig because we are fighting an uphill battle because there's so many different factors. It's not just the bad guys who are out there willing to take advantage of vulnerable hair loss sufferers. It's the vulnerable hair loss sufferers who are unwilling to take no for an answer. Yep. And with the internet, these guys, the, the, all the young generation, they should be able to realize if they've got common sense, they should realize. And, um, I hope they do. I hope they find you guys. You know, you, you can't beat the experience that that you guys have got. Then the younger people out there, you know, um, they they don't know what. Let me. I, I don't want to name and shame anyone, but the guy that's going for his second hair transplant, he's only in his early thirties. He's starting to sell products on his YouTube page. If all those products were working. Why would he be going for his second hair transplant? That's all I've got to say. Well, I also know that uh, I, was, I was contacted by a physician who was solicited by a person, one of these people, may have been this guy, and essentially he wanted a free hair transplant for promotion. And he's like, well, I, I'd be more than happy to offer you a discount. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't know how big my channel is, you know, some shit like that. At least that... And again, this is hearsay. This is what this physician told me. I don't know if it's true. But that, that is the mentality. And listen, all I can say is I feel bad for these young guys who are drawn in by all this. But fuck them. If they're not smart enough to, you know, it's all out there. Joe's very visible. I'm very visible. The American Hair Loss Association is very visible. If, if they're not interested in doing real research, it's their fucking loss. That's how I feel at this point. Maybe I'm jaded. You, know, you also got to understand, Graham, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the guys that are watching these videos, they don't want to know the truth. They want to they wanna have, they want to hear the hopeful stories. No matter how much horseshit is involved, they want to have uh, hope. And I get it. I get it. But, you know, just like with Spencer, you know, my message, I mean, you, you see my, my class videos there's no silver lining in all this. Like it's, it's a really basic thing. Propecia or finasteride if you know, of some form, maybe minoxidil, yep. uh, wigs and hair transplant surgery. That's it. That's all you got. You got, you, you, you got nothing like you got a little PRP that might yeah. augment a little bit to a lesser extent, maybe laser, you know, that's it. There, there's nothing 
There's nothing out there. These guys are buying RU58841, if it's even that, from gray marketplaces. They're doing these group buys for all this, other, all this nonsense that they have to mix themselves. And they are out there. I guess, I guess there's a sense where, I was speaking to one journalist about this, where there's a, a proactive, like, bro science aspect to it that, you know what? You know, it's kind of like a Lorenzo's oil thing. Maybe someone will find uh, these, you know, uh, an effective treatment. And people are willing to self-experiment and put that stuff online. So I guess, you know, in one sense, it could be seen as heroic. But, it, you know, the way I see it is it's just fucking sad. You know, people are wasting their time, their money. Who knows what they're putting on their scalps? But, but it also shows you that there's no money to be made in the truth. Like, like there, there really is. There's no money to be made on the truth because it's the guys that are online hawking these these wares that, that are you know fringe, um, fringe treatments at best. Like that's 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 where the money is. Well, so I, I have that, to. I'm going to correct you. There is most people don't understand how to make money, telling the truth. That's. I mean, we both make money telling the truth, yeah. but it's different. Like we don't have products to sell. Right. You know, it's like these, well, that's these, where that's where minds and, and guys who are trying to be entrepreneurial about that about this. This is where their minds go because that's the way the world works. Um, you know, you have to be creative enough to kind of figure out a way, and they haven't, and most people can't, uh, to earn a great living while doing the right thing. And with that said, even though we've been able to accomplish that, and I've been doing this for this is my career for a very long time. Um, then we're looked at it with a jaundice eye as if, well, I mean, they gotta be, they gotta be selling out somehow. Something has to be happening or the bad guys who are unable to do what we do. They start to, to create all this bullshit defamation and false narratives and all this stuff. It's just a dirty fucking place, man. It's a really dirty place, but you're right. In general, telling the truth is not a way to make a living. You know, uh, a, a bit off topic, like I work on a golf course, a private golf course, and, um, you know, uh, do any of you guys play golf? You know, it's funny. I do not play golf. I have, all I, of my friends I, want I, me to play okay. golf. I just don't have the time. All right. Here's an example. You know, someone will come up to me and they'll go, oh, the, the greens are a bit slow today. And I'll, I'll just randomly say off my head, oh, yeah, it's because we had a, a little bit of rain. And they'll think automatically, oh, yeah, we did have a bit of rain. That's the reason. That's not the reason why the greens are slow. We didn't cut the greens today. You know, <laughs> it's, I, there, there is so many, it, so much bullshit out there. Even in my job, you know, um, you know, oh, I missed that putt. Oh, you know, you're probably holding the putter wrong or the grip was wrong. That's why you did it. Didn't you realize you had you, you weren't holding the putter right? Oh, now I, actually I did. You know what I mean, though? You, it just naturally comes out. Well, that, and that's, that's the truth. That's and the, yeah. what I, I tell everybody, is, especially young people, is everything is bullshit in, 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 in most cases. And calling out bullshit, it gets you in trouble, you know, and it puts you, it puts you in the crosshairs. But in general, everything that we were taught as children, everything in life, putting doctors on pedestals and all these people, you know, these professionals on pedestal, it's all fucking bullshit. Half these guys have bullshitted their way into their positions. Very few people really deserve the adulation uh, in, in any profession that, 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 they, that, that they get. And when it comes to physicians and attorneys and stuff, they kind of just expect it, especially physicians. If they have an MD or even a DO, geez, I shouldn't have said that, people don't a MD or a DO or a PhD or some letters behind their name. It's as though, you know, they're, they're at a, on a different level. All they had to do is go to fucking school. To me, that's the easiest thing in the world. Oh, wait, here, here you go. Follow this curriculum and you will get this degree. How fucking hard is that? Try doing what I do, motherfuckers. That's hard. Yeah. 
Anyway. You know, the, the funny thing is, Spence, they'll, they'll look at you and they'll go, I remember this saying, what's the difference between the experienced guy and the qualified guy? And, that's, and the thing is, the qualified guy reads the fine print, and that's what they'll say to you. They'll say, you're not qualified, mate. You don't know what you're talking about. Sure. And that's how these people come back at you, even though what you said is the truth. Right. You've got a ton more experience. And not in all cases that works. You know, you need an experienced person. But you never claim to be a physician, a doctor, a specialist, or anything like that. You just tell what you feel and what you've seen in the industry. And that's what that's what I mean. That's what I like about your show. It's as straight down the line as honest, you know. And you're not getting on saying this Dermarola, if you buy for $35, is going to work when you can buy it for about $4 off eBay. You're not doing that. Sure. Now, please don't end up doing that. Oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. When I sell out, it's going to be in a, in a much bigger way, and I'll let all you guys know ahead of time. And you'll be like, okay, well, listen, it was just time. He'll all actually right, say I'm selling out. I'll be like, look, I, I'll be like, li listen, guys, I got, I got an opportunity. I did my best for the last 30 years. I'm selling out. Gone fishing. Good luck. And that's it. And you'll know. You'll know why I did it and who I sold out to. By the way, here's a link to my yep. GoFundMe. <laughs> 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 well listen graham i always appreciate your call uh the fact that you're calling from from australia is, it's just amazing to me i mean, listen i'm an older guy so this is still it still flips me out that we have this type of reach and the world is yeah, so no, small now that's the great thing about the internet it's made the, the world a small place and um it, it, technology is fantastic, except in the hair loss industry. So, well, and a lot of industries, but yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. But listen, we're 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 changing things. Believe me, things are changing. People just have to be keep their eyes open and their ears open, and be willing to kind of just. Some people are just going to have to accept their fate, and some people's fate is you can't be helped. Yeah, you're going to have yep. to shave your head, or you're going to have to potentially. If you can deal with it, wear a hair system. That's it. Those are your choices. And if they can't deal with that, and a lot of guys can't, uh, that's when people get in trouble. Yeah. So, yep. all right, Graham, listen, thanks so much, man, as usual. Have a great weekend, Joe, and um, Spence. Always awesome talking to you. And I'll send you a couple more months. I'll do an update photo, and I'll send it to you, and... Um, We'll have a chat again. We'd love to see you. Listen, call anytime, man. No Great hearing from you, buddy. Thank All you right, very take much. care. Bye bye. See you guys. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hello. 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 Hey. Hey, my name's uh, Marcel, calling from Philadelphia. Marcel from Philly. What's happening? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I just want to. Uh, I don't know, give you a rundown of, of my hair loss journey. Yeah. Sure. Of how, okay, so how old I'm are you? 26 now. You're 26, 26 okay. 26 now, yeah. And uh, around 19 or 20, I was, that's when I, like, started receding in my corners. And then, like, in the black community, it's crazy. If you have, like, a receding hairline, it's like a, uh, it's like the never-ending joke, you know? Oh, you know, I, I, you know it, it's funny because sure. I just learned about this not too long ago that it was essentially you are judged by your hairline in the black community. It's crazy. It's like that's all that's all people see is your hairline. It's it, like yeah. it could it could really like, you know, shatter your own your confidence or whatnot. Poor LeBron, man. I mean that's why he did what he did. <laughs> yeah, you see how hard he gets hammered. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah initially uh, i remember back then reading up on like uh for the financial writer propecia thing but i wasn't really into it because you know when you read up on that you're gonna read all the horror stories that come with it or whatnot so i i went the um you know like the natural route uh you know i didn't try the onion juice on the head Going, uh, sitting upside down a little bit throughout the day, 
Uh, you name it, I I didn't try it. You sound like me, man. I except I'm I'm 20 years older than you. <laughs> yeah. I tried all types of oils. Uh, did the biotin thing. Thirty. Nothing seemed. Nothing was seeming to work. Well, but here's the thing, man. Here, here's the here's the thing, and I want to point this out. Uh And as desperate hair loss sufferers, and I was one too, and I still am in a sense. um, If any of this shit worked, do you think anybody would be doing hair transplants, or there would be bald people walking around? Makes sense to me. Makes great sense. you right about that. 100% yeah. right. We would, I would not have a career in, in this field, and we would not be on the air for 22 years. Right. So, all right. So, I'm, you did the onion juice, hung upside down, did all that shit. What else? <laughs> what else did I do? Uh, you know, the, the uh, certain shampoos. I've, I've been through all of that. So, fast forward to, like, now, I... Um, you know, like scrolling through Instagram, I see like the hem stuff, and I'm I'm currently am giving that a try. So I guess it all came back full circle to the finesse rod, I guess. Yeah, and you know what? That that's actually one thing that I really appreciate about hems and keeps is that they're giving young men a chance to actually treat their hair loss medically. And they, they kind of lead the Propecia aspect of it. You know, they rebranded, in a sense, Propecia. And, yeah, they, yeah I, I agree with that 100%. You know, so it kind of gives people a chance to, to give it a shot. So I, I, I think it's well, – I, I don't agree with all of the, the business model. I really think that people should be seeing a physician. Uh, I also mm-hmm. can't – I can't knock them because they're giving you guys a chance. So I think it's great. So go ahead. Right, yeah, it de- they definitely do change the stigma on 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 it in my eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I've been I've been on that currently for like uh, going on two months, and I I don't have any any like you know the stuff that you read about mm-hmm. any major side effects or anything. But when I initially first took it, I I was feeling like stomach pains. Now I don't know if that was because of of it. Or what? But yeah, currently I I don't feel anything from it. Now I do have a question. Like later on down the line, will I feel anything possibly? Even though I don't feel anything like negative happening. Well, if you I read about I... it on the internet, you will. If you stay off the internet, there's a good chance. And again, I'm not a physician that you're not going to have any adverse side effects. There's a greater chance of not having adverse side effects than having us adverse side effects. And that chance is significantly greater. You know, psychologically, if you were to tell somebody, even if it was a 5% risk factor that you were gonna have adverse side effects or 10% risk factor, that scares people. Mm -hmm. But if you were to flip it around and say, you know what, you have a 90% chance of not having any any adverse side effects. That's fucking pretty good, those are pretty good odds. And when I like tell my uh you know my friends or family member what I'm doing, they say, "Oh, you crazy, man!" Once I tell them, you know the side effects, they say, "I would never, you know, take something like that." Yeah, and then they, they yeah. then, then they take a hit of a joint, or they you know, or they're taking their antidepressants, <laughs> exactly. or they're drinking out of you know, exactly. they're, they're drinking a six pack. Exactly, they don't put far worse things in their body. Yeah, than you know, so that yeah, that that is. Crazy. I do got to um And if you're living in Philly, I'm assuming they're drinking 40s, too. I'm just saying. I mean, I did in New York. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. yeah, they turn up down there. Yeah. For sure. They turn up. So if you yeah. want you want to be impotent, drink a couple of 40s. That could happen. Yeah. I, I, might, I might drink a Yingling here and there. I don't know about the 40 ounce. I might, I might drink a little more here. I used to drink 40 ounces of, they weren't called 40s when I was uh, a kid. They were called um, big bottles of beer. I forgot what they were called. But <laughs> I, I used to drink like uh, fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, Old English. Old English, uh, Ing Bing. That's a little nickname they got for them down here, Ing Bing. Yeah, yeah well. Back in the day, it was just Old English, and there's something called Pink Champagne, which was ridiculous. It was sweet, like almost like champagne, 
And we were Shit. kids. We would get so fucked up and, yeah, and in the, uh, hang out and smoke cigarettes. The, the, the uh, chat room, the guy was uh, talking about the four locals, and I was telling him I used to get hammered off of those a couple years ago. All you need is, is one can of them, and you you somewhere geeking. Geeking. I don't yeah, even know what that means, like, but it sounds fucked like, up. Like, like somewhere, like, just rolling, like, you know, like, just fucked up, like. Yeah, we were, I mean, we're talking about like a 14, 15 year old kids. We go to the arcade after two forties and it was just, I don't even know how we were allowed in when I think about it. I mean, back then it was just such a, such a different world, man. But, um, so, so listen, so, so, okay. So you're not having any adverse side effects now. Don't worry about the potential of having adverse side effects. I could sit here and say, you know what? I'm cancer free right now, but will I get cancer tomorrow? You know, or I'm taking this, you know, whatever. I'm eating this food that's, you know, shown to, you know, cause some people to have, you know, rosacea or whatever it is. You know, it's on that list. Will I be affected by it, you know, a year from now? Now, as like doing like, you know, my little independent research, it says that it's, it's not like, like the finasteride or the monoxide isn't like really for like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Your temples, anything? Is that is it truth to that? No, it, it, it was only no. It, it just wasn't uh, approved uh, on the, the the temple region or in the hairline because it takes a lot of money to get the dr a drug approved for a specific area or application. So they focused on crown loss initially, and that's what both companies did. And uh, but no, I mean, there's no reason why it's not going to work on your entire scalp. There's no um, uh, physiological mechanism that makes DHT-sensitive hair um, yeah. immune to any of these drugs. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's the thinking. I was thinking, like, why wouldn't it? Like, what's different from, uh, you know, the frontal part to, to the own crown? Like, it's still, like... You know, hair follicles. There is none. You're, you're reading some bullshit about the uh, Galia, the Galia. What is it? The get ga Galia, Joe? Uh, Galia. Galia. Yeah. And you read all kinds of nonsense. It has nothing, believe me, blood flow, nothing to do with it. Uh, I've known guys who've grown their entire hairlines back with finasteride. No topicals, mm -hmm. just finasteride alone. Uh, I would say that the recession of my hairline has basically slowed to a crawl. I don't want to give myself kind of her or bad luck or jinx, but slow to crawl over the last 25 years. Um, and you've been, you've been on it for 25 years. I've been on it for, let's see, since like 1993. And how long is that? Have no complications whatsoever. I haven't been able to have sex since I was 20, but you know, what do I give a <laughs> shit? I got a good head of hair, but uh, no, I've had no adverse side effects that I'm aware of, except at the very beginning. And I, I, and I speak about this publicly. Sorry, ladies, but I definitely uh, had a, a lowered amount of seminal fluid. Uh, so I'm not shooting ropes anymore. That's just that's all. That's all. What is that? For it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. Shooting ropes. I'm not shooting ropes. So I, I'm out of the porn business forever. That's it. I have no issue with. Uh, any sensation or, um, no you know, prostate issues, that, anything like that. Not that I'm aware of. And I get checked out all the time. Um, nothing, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm a 54 year old man. I, you know, this is too TMI, but I mean, wake up with wood all the time. I have a very normal, probably more than, uh, normal for my age, maybe because I'm in good shape or in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. You know, sex life. I, yeah, I, I have buddy, buddies that I know who are like my age. They're like, you have sex every week? I'm like, every week? Jesus. <laughs> Got any more than that. But, uh, yeah, right. so, and I, I actually know guys who are in shape, friends of mine who are on this drug, who've been on it for well over a decade. Some guys are about 20 years, and they have no adverse effects either. But it happens. It happens to some people and and some people it's psychosomatic and some people it's real but the percentage is relatively low and anyone who believes 
There's this lady that has contacted me twice who believes that we're somehow in bed with the pharmaceutical companies. It's insane. First of all, it would be, they would be in tremendous trouble if they were somehow in a clandestine fashion allowing me to pimp out their drugs. And I couldn't do it either. So we are making no money from talking about this drug. It is all based on our own personal experiences. I make, there's, there's no incentive for me except to see you guys, you know, potentially be helped by talking about our experience with this drug. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I'm happy I, I actually, uh, you know, found you guys. Ever since I found you, I've, I've been tuned into every show in the chat, and this, this is my first time getting a chance to really call in and talk with you. Well, I'm glad that you called in. We have a, a handful of black guys that call in, uh, and I could, I could probably count them on two, two hands, maybe, uh, in the last 20-some-odd years. And what I, what I like is that I've learned, I had no clue about this hairline issue. I was always under the, under the assumption that black guy starts to lose his hair, he shaves his head, and he's lucky because in, in general, you know, because you guys have dark skin, you know, you can get away with it. You're not seeing that shadow. It doesn't feel, make you look sick. The complete, complete yeah. opposite. Like, I feel like you guys, like, y'all look fine with, you know, the bald and look or, like, the, uh, the, the George Jefferson type. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know that. I mean, look, we, <laughs> Weezy didn't mind. Oh my God! I love that reference. We actually should have some sort of a, a like a sit down, where we all get together, and we talk about we have Asian guys, we have Caucasian guys, we have black guys. Talk about the the, the shit that we think goes on in each other's you know culture when it comes to hair loss. That'd be that'd be great. Now, how, now how is it within like y'all co like is it like bashing like or is like somebody pull you to the side like hey dude like what's going on with your hair or something. Like no, your culture oh, is a lot is a lot harsher, I think, when it comes to it. But ours yeah, is pretty we harsh. Just, we just don't talk about in it. In front of a bunch of females and a guy just say somebody like, come on, dude, what are you going on? Now, now well, the girls. I had that, uh, at it. a friend of mine who was a bouncer at a bar, um, and I was, this girl was chatting me up, and I was like 23 years old. And... I don't know what this guy, what the deal with this guy was. He was a nice looking dude. You know, he had no problem getting women that I'm aware of, but he always had this thing with me. And he said to this girl, why are you even talking to this guy? Like he was drunk. He's going to be bald in a couple of years. And I was like, oh no, he didn't. He's supposed to be your friend. I don't sound like a friend to me. Well, that's, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I dealt with that a lot in my life. And as a kid, you don't realize that there's some sort of form of jealousy. Right. You just kind of think like, what the fuck? Why are people such assholes to me? You know? Yeah. But it was either on the baseball diamond or, you know, in a bar with girls, whatever it is. I always, I got that from a young age. I learned to get a thick skin because of it. But yeah, I mean, we're in contact now, but we weren't friends for a long time. I was just like, you know, I got to cut this cancer out of my and life. Moment. It was because of that moment he, he caught blocks Spencer with the hair comment. Oh, no, I, I slept with her, but <laughs> it wasn't, uh, it, 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 I had to like That's start explaining shit, right you know? Yeah. I've only had that happen once yeah, like, uh, before hair transplant surgery. I only had it happen one time where I got called out for my hair loss and it was in high school. And I was, I was sitting at the lunch table with, you know, the, the thousand other people uh, that that were there, and I don't I don't remember who the kid was, but I remember hearing, in like from a distance, you will, you won't, you won't, yeah. you won't, you will, you won't, you won't, and this kid was going was walking down. He was playing. Uh, he was playing Norwood Duck 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 Goose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he got to me and he said you will and kept going. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, uh, you're going to lose your hair. Your your the back of your head is thinning. I was 17. Yeah. At the lunch table in high school. What the hell? Yeah. I know mean, this guy was relentless. And and you know what? Guess who has more hair now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Last laugh is always the best laugh. That is. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that is great. I got to isolate that for the show. I like that. You'll say, can you say that again? <laughs> Last laugh, always the best laugh. Dude, and that is the God's honest truth. You know, I say to all these guys, go fuck yourself. Now you you now you want my help? I'm like the grim fucking reaper. At some point, someone's going to come to me for help. They may have made fun of me years ago. But now they all like, so, so that Propecia really works, huh? Yes, it does, motherfucker. <laughs> you think? Like... Yeah. But listen, I'm glad. Listen, you're, it's, you're a great, great call, by the way. And um, how's the weather in Philly now? Is it, it's hot and humid, right? Say it again. How's the weather now in Philly? It's hot, humid. It's, today is actually uh, it's pretty it's pretty good out. It's like nice little warm too, but it's not like crazy hot right now. I gotta say, I like but, Philadelphia uh, a lot. That's one of the cities that, and I, besides New York, but it's kind of like just it, it has a, a, a. I'm not gonna say a similar vibe. But there's something about Philadelphia that I just, I always liked. I can't explain what it is. I know it's in Pennsylvania, nothing against Pennsylvania, but there was something about the people and the food and the culture that I, I always really liked. And I would go there a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the food is a big part of the city, like you said. And yeah, there is a, a bunch of culture down here, especially when it comes to. Our sporting events, like uh oh, the fucking the Eagles, league, yeah, Eagles fans. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I don't get along with the, uh, <laughs> you know, the Eagles, Eagles fans. It's so funny. I know I know a guy from uh, Philadelphia, from the Philadelphia area, who's a Cowboys fan as well. He, he also happens to be a brother. He was not only a brother; he was the brother of my ex girlfriend. And this guy still, he's like in his, he's got to be 50 now. He still is walking around with that fucking star in his chest. <laughs> you know, guy I'm looks like, guy's like, guy looks like Suge Knight and he's wearing his, his, uh, his Cowboys jersey. This, this Cowboys against the world. That's how I feel. I, I'm, I'm a die Cowboys fan. That's all I know. Well, dude, listen. Keep us abreast of, of, of what, what goes on. Do you have any last questions? Say it again. Did you have a final question before we let you go? Um, and I'm, oh, yeah. And I, um, are you, how y'all big on thermal rolling? Because I'm, 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 I got that in my regimen as well. I, I'm not. I was on. Um, you not. What about, what about Joe? You, you big on the thermal rolling thing? Uh, I'm not big on it. I, I know that there's there's some isolated cases where there's a visible difference, but it's, it's really, um, it, it's really something that people shouldn't look to as being a, a big game changer. I, I just don't believe in it. You think it'd do more help than hurt? And it would hurt. Well, it depends on how you do it. Like, like how big is the needle or the, or the needles on the, on the roller? Uh, is it a 0.5? I, I have a 0.5. 0.5? Okay. Um, like if you use it maybe every few days or once a week, it won't it won't cause any harm. And yeah. I, I'm still like investing in these. Um, ever well, ever since I started the the, the hems thing, I've been this. I would normally never do this because it's actually like drying my hair out. I like use this the uh, the DHT blocking shampoo every day. I I don't like how it um. Is making my like it make my hair feel like um, crispy or something like dried out. Is it good to, to do that every day? I wouldn't, but again, we're we're not doctors, you know. First of all, if you're feeling any negative impact of anything that you're doing, it's then you got to cut back. You got to cut back. Yeah, because on the hem with the hem, they say like they use it every day or it won't work. Mm, you know what? So I don't know. Uh, if you look at any bottle of shampoo, it says to shampoo, rinse, and repeat. You know why they say that? Because they want to sell more fucking shampoo, dude. Exactly. True. 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 You only need to you only need to shampoo once. So. All right. All right, man. Ah, uh, yeah. I I enjoy your time. Thank you for taking my call. Dude, Mar it's Marcus, right? You said Marcus. 
Mar- Marcel. Marcel. I'm, I'm Sully, yeah, Sully Tyree in the chat, if you all catch uh, me chatting with people. All right, man. Well, you know what? You're a great caller, man. Love to have you call back. So just keep us abreast of what's going on. No doubt. Thank you, guys. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Since we started so late, we're going to take another call? Yeah, we'll take one more call. All right. I, I, want, I want to say, though, um, just just to go back to what Nico was saying when he called in earlier about the video, I, I realize why there's a video of me doing scalp lexi exercises being used by another clinic. It's because I actually know who the clinic is. And back in the day, I actually gave him permission, said, yeah, sure, you can use the video. And uh, so it's not, there's, no, there, there's nothing untoward going on. It's actually a, f- a friend of mine in South Africa. So it's all good. He actually does decent work too. All right. I hate the name of the clinic, Medical well, Hair Restoration. <laughs> well, I actually, th- I'm surprised that they're not part of the IHS. We need anybody that's good to support what we're doing, period. So give them not a, to use they aren't yours. <laughs> yeah. Give them a call, Joe. I will. All right. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's Mo from Jersey. How you guys doing? Mo. What's Mo. happening? The millennial Mo. Remember that? That was the that was the new uh crown name that that, that Spence gave me. Fucking Millennial Mo, man. Here we go. What's up? How you, doing, How you guys been? You guys been you guys been avoiding us like you guys all all this child support. What's going on? Dude, we you know, I'm just like, you know what, fuck these guys. We're done, man. You know, we're gonna have to start getting you guys more like we gotta start having you guys more organized. I'll I'll, I'll happily be the guy to do it if you want me to. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna organize it? I'm gonna give you guys a set time, a set uh day, like it's like it's telecast. You know, like Thursday, 7 p.m., every Thursday, or, you know, or, or every Thursday and some, something like that. We'll get you guys, you know, that. We'll get you guys some, you know, maybe we, you guys should start charging us, you know, $5 a show, you know, or something like that. So you guys get a little. You guys, of, yeah, you, you'll be the only one who pays, Mo. That's true. That's let me, true. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Everyone is all talk, all fucking talk. If I had to make a living off of, of the several million people that I've helped over the years, I'd be fucking broke. Of course, Mo would be asking for a receipt. What did you say? But Mo would be asking for a receipt. (laughs) I would ask for a receipt. I really would. You know, you know, you know me. You guys know me enough now at this point to know that I would ask for a fucking receipt. Well, we we send you an automated receipt. So we'll start start a, uh, a Patreon page where all of you guys will give us $20 a month for this broadcast. How do you feel about that? Listen, let me put it this way. If we can waste our money on onion juice and snake oil, you know, we can waste our money here too. Let me put it that way. Well, I, and, and I agree with that, but I can tell you this, maybe we get a thousand dollars a month. Maybe. And that's, that's stretchy. It doesn't matter how many people listen every week. It doesn't matter how many downloads we get. Maybe that's what would happen. That's the way you hair loss guys are. Listen, it's not just the way the hair loss is. The world is just, you know, it's just, it's just cheap. But, but listen, I was listening to to the show since pretty much the start of it. And uh, that by the way, I'm a hair loss guy is, too. So, you know, but go ahead. Right. Well, th- you know, when you guys were talking about that that clinic in Pakistan, I think you were talking about was Joe. Was this the the uh, the, uh, the TV celebrity that you guys were talking about? No. Um, no. no. This this was very recent. It was only the past past a uh, few weeks. And it was well, it was shared in a, in a private group. Did Did you hear about that celebrity, that TV actor? Uh, uh, I I did. Vaguely, yeah, yeah. I I remember it. Well, just to you know, catch you up, it, it's he's a celebrity, and I've actually my, my family knows of him. You know, my family comes from a South Asian, uh, Indian, and Pakistani uh, background, and and the guy's actually a really good actor, and his story was essentially where he was a full-on Norwood 7, like no hair transplant success case. Um, and honestly, from, from his story, and, and, and this is really, you know, sad that, that he still went down this road. He was never really into, you know, you know, a hair, you know, a hair transplant or really, according to him, well, you know, he could be lying, but according to him, you know, never really had the intention to. This doctor who was, uh, uh, you know, your colleague of his has kind of begged him to, to be 
you know, let me work on you and let me work on you for a few years. And then he finally gave in and said yes. And it's probably one of the most disgusting things I've seen. Um, you know, his, his basically his scalp has just been uh, destroyed. I mean, you could see cartilage, like really, really bad. Spencer, you've seen it. I mean, this is, I mean, this was bad. And now essentially what, what's happened is obviously this, the op was a failure and he's now had to have skin grafting as if he was a burn victim to, to get it repaired. And, you know, just the other day, my, my, my parents, I was in my parents' house and he's, he's a pretty well-known actor. And now every hmm. TV show I see him in, he always has like a hat on. What's his you name? Know? And, uh, Oh Jesus. Uh, I forget the name. I'm not really into into that, but but you know, if you type in a Pakistani actor failed hair transplant, I'm sure he will come up because you know he's it 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 really trended viral in in South Asia and but you know Bollywood is is right next door, so right. you know they're they're kind of all interlinked, and um and you know it's 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 huge and he really trended obviously for all the wrong reasons. But listen, man, I'll give you I'll give him credit because for him to come out and say what happened to him and he was he was stressing. To, to guys like us, you know, do your research. That, I mean, that's really what he was doing. He was like, you know, if you need to do this first, he was basically putting anybody off. He was like, if you are to do it, do your research. Don't kind of just give in to whoever. And, you know, it's just, man, I, I'm disappointed because it's, it's. I mean, I had a cousin of mine from from the U.K., you know, and it could be a good clinic. Is his name Sajid Hassan? I believe so, yes. Yeah. I believe so, yes. And it, it's just, you know, it, it's. It's vulnerability. People will do anything. I just had a cousin from the UK. He went to Turkey, and you know, obviously, we, you know, the Turkey is like the, you know, the, the, you know, uh, you know, the, the black hole of, of hair transplants. But you know, there are obviously a few good clinics there. And but he went there because apparently they, you know, uh, asked. They they promised that it's a thirty year guarantee. You know, these this bullshit thing. And you know, I'm like, well, thirty what years. He's talking about thirty year guarantee wow now, you know obviously you know now that's you know I, I don't know how they're the exact marketing is if this hair will last 30 years well i'm like well ideally if it's a successful transplant that hair should be permanent but i don't know if it, how they're marketing it um is it you know you won't need to have another surgery in 30 i don't know but but it's a 30-year guarantee and it's just it, it's just people now it's you, you know joe we talked about this last time i called in are there better options now than we've had 30 years ago? Of, of course there, are, there is, you know, but are there worse options now also? Uh, yeah, you know, with the good comes the bad. And the, the, the shitty part is, and, you know, listen to the show from the start, you know, these hair transplant educators, I really, I don't know if it should be, maybe this sounds a little too communist Russia of me, but we really need to have a point where YouTube and, and even Google, especially YouTube, because it's visual. Um, we need to start having, you know, some kind of review of if this should start being allowed because some of these hair transplant educators were selling snake oil, selling this, and you know, when you're selling me something, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna freak you guys out right now. I just got an ad on YouTube from, or somebody posted this from the hair salon, uh, hair by Modern Salon, and it was a you know, like a no, and then YouTube, and said hair replacement YouTube tutorials, and a DIY disaster. And it's all about this, what we're talking about. First of all, that's freaking me out because my computer's listening to me. Yeah, that's that <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. You know, but but it's just, it, it, I'm, at, I'm at the point now where, and, and listen, uh, you know, I don't feel bad anymore either if, if, cause listen, if they could come, if they can find, you know, who, or, you know, the snake oil guys, they can find you guys too, you know? And I, obviously I think you guys have more subscribers. Joe's, um, you know, subscri subscription is pretty high from what I know. And, and, you know, it's just, there's no, are there options? Of course there are, you know, you know, I, and, and I think, you know, sometimes they, they don't watch you guys enough. And I will say you, Joe is very good at, catching the eye good or bad you know and, and you know there was this comment somebody wrote oh uh you know he, oh he himself got a hair transplant is not but he's not you know uh, he's telling other people not to have a hair transplant no you dipshit he's essentially saying you, you know 
like obviously because I've, I've you know I've followed you guys that obviously there are options there, but come in with realistic options and go with good options. Yeah. Look, look what, what 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 I I learned early on in my in in my entrepreneurial career, not just in this field, is that in general, and this can sound as obnoxious as you want to take it, uh, most people are idiots, and you know, the, otherwise there wouldn't be a select few who are able to kind of strive and move forward uh, beyond most people's, you know, uh, uh, expectancies in life and our expectations in life. And what I mean by that is everybody thinks that they're know-it-alls. Everybody is very cynical. And nobody wants to take kind of like the harder route no one wants to take the time to educate themselves. Uh, so they kind of do very brief research. They gravitate to what they think, you know, is more positive, meaning that's going to help them faster in their lives. And then they poo-poo everything else. To say it to a person like Joe, you know, or to not understand the basic concept of what Joe is trying to put out there with don't have a hair transplant, it means they didn't even spend a minute watching that video. Right. Well, yeah, it, right. it means that they saw the, the title that I put, which is designed to get people to at least look at it, and they just go right down the comments, and it's like, this guy didn't, doesn't know what he's talking about. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. It, you know, that was my first hair transplant class that I uploaded, and I've learned uh, from that experience over the past few years that I've been doing this that I, I actually need to dumb shit down for people. Like, I, I can't, Jesus, like, why, why do you think I put you on the show, dude? Well, of course. I mean, so, to, to to balance things out. Yeah. But I, I was I was trying to find my angle there. But, <laughs> but, but you know, uh, let me put it this way: from, from all you for all you guys out there, I actually before I I came across you guys, Spencer. I told you I, I came across Joe first, and then you. Yeah, yeah. Before I came across Joe, I do feel like I was you know fairly educated, not as educated maybe as I should be, but fairly educated. No, I, I knew who the good clinics were. Let me put it that way. That's pretty much at that you point. Think you think you knew which were the good clinics were. <laughs> yeah. well, you well, think well, you knew. Let me put it this way. I, I, the, the fraudulent clinics that I was impressed by doing research, I kind of realized who they were. And almost all okay. the clinics, all IHRS, mem uh, IHRS members, um, you know, you know, like, so I will say I feel even more comfortable now having a surgery because I feel like I'm more mentally ready and mentally prepared. Had I not come across you guys, I might have expected a one and done, you know, hair like Brad Pitt, you know, okay, let's go. But now I feel like I, I'm even more comfortable getting a hair transplant because I know. Uh, maybe like I Brad know. Pitt's armpits. That's, maybe, that, that's maybe. about it. I was going to say, this it. is like a but, great sound clip to take. I was like holding my finger up for you to kind of just hold off and finish. And you're like, but Brad Pitt's armpits. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm not going to take it anyway. When's the last time I actually uh, isolated anything? Jesus. Uh, so I actually need cool. somebody in my office, in my studio to do that. Anyway, go ahead. That would be good. If you guys get drops like of each thing, and you guys probably could get a lot of drops from the show. Just kind of cut. Are you kidding me? Seven. When I was on radio, that's what we did. My, my producer would go in after the program, take the air check, and do all the drops. Who do I have oh now? God, that would be cool. Nobody. Nobody. And I, I don't have time to do it myself. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of te technology, and in, in, in this has come a long way. You could probably, you know, you know have a download, um, you know, software and kind of cut and paste yourself, but it is a lot of work. Oh, yeah, I can do it all myself, and I do it all myself. I can put out the podcast. I can do it all. I just don't have the fucking time. I have to find some kid. Maybe I'll find an intern to come in here Maybe. and do that for me. Offer him, a, offer him a, a discount for an IHRS hair transplant. Oh, uh, see, I would never do that. I know you wouldn't yeah. do that. I know you wouldn't do that. But if you were fucked up, you would do that. If I was but, fucked uh, up, I would. I'd give him a free one. Be like, yeah, whatever. You want a hair transplant? You got to work for me for life. So. You know, but but listen, guys. Uh, but which again, I, I know it's being you know maybe selfish, but maybe not. Listen, I think the only critique I have um, of you guys is just you know, and it's not even a critique. It's it's just just, tr and I know you guys are busy. I know you guys are doing tons of other things, but it, just try to put out 
as much material as you can, Joe, especially you, because I mean, that last video, you know, that, that went, uh, that went, you know, that was really, really good. You know, <laughs> uh, the, the hair or the shave or no shave. It's just because I feel like all the bad ones are just pumping out videos every day. And I know they monetize their stuff. And a lot of these guys, this is how they make their money now. Um, they, they, you know, this is their job. And, you know, and I know this is, this in itself isn't your job. You guys are doing this, but listen, it's really the only hope we have. I wish we had a few other, you know, Tillmans and Cobrins, but I don't really see any others. You know, it's just, um, well, you know, it, it's really interesting. I, I, I really appreciate that that, uh, that that sentiment and that suggestion and, and the encouragement. I really do because I, I kick myself in the ass all the time. It's like I actually started I actually started um, I actually filmed another video two days ago, and my process is it's it's a really complicated process. It's like I'll actually record something. It's all off the top of my head, and then I put on my PC. I start to edit, and then I see where I could have done it different, and I just I just delete it. I turn around in front of my camera and I, I start over and I do it again. And that's usually when I get my, my final take to where it works. But then I started having camera problems and it's just this, this whole thing. But um, the, the next one's going to be, it's, hopefully I can get it done for next week, uh, the, the law of supply and demand. It's another, it's another subject that you're not hearing about anywhere. And it has to do with why my own hairline is so high. And I, I talk about this, but... Um, yeah. You know, what you're talking about with, with the, um, we'll say YouTubers that are pumping out all this content. I was, I was thinking about this while you guys were talking and, you know, I actually reached out to a couple of these guys early on to suggest mm-hmm. that they come on the show and it, it would do nothing but, it, you know, give some sort of validity to them because Spencer and I thought it would be a good idea. It's like, you know what, these guys, uh, they, they've got an, uh, a, I, I guess an outlook on this that, that we don't have because they are so much younger and mm-hmm. they, I, I guess maybe they were intimidated. I, I don't know what it was or, or maybe they, maybe they felt like they couldn't, you know, push their shit, uh, you know, on our, on our, on our channel. I, I don't know what it was, but, but their, their obvious, like their hopes, their, their ambitions are to make a living from their YouTube videos Nothing wrong with yep. that. I, I wish them all the best with that. But the problem is that, you know, like when I'm doing my videos, I'm, I'm actually, I, I try to put a high production value on it because I, I want it to look good for you guys. I want to try to make, make you laugh a little bit, make you think a little bit, instead of just read off a piece of paper and say why something's good. And then, you know, here's a link down the bottom uh, to go buy it for yourself. I, I'm trying to do something more than that, but the problem is it it does take a lot of time, and I am a one man show, so or one man. No, it is. With- well, as far as content, just let, let let me throw this out there as well. So I've been like struggling, saying, okay, I have literally hundreds of hours of content that we have not put out there. So, but yeah. instead of going backwards, I decided this week that and I spoke to Andrew about this, but I'm just going to take both of this week's programs have them cut into segments and also have the full podcast um, transcribed and start this week. Start with the content and then go, you know, go backwards. And that's it. It will still be putting content out there. I had this thing in my mind like, you know, it's got to be dated. We have all this old stuff that we, get, we haven't put out yet. Fuck that. Wasting time. I've been very busy with my own shit, obviously, and, and you know, doing what I do. But we can put out segments of this program Every single day. Yeah. Oh, easily. Easily. I, I, I think you guys cover, I mean, you guys cover so much ground in one show. Yeah. And, and Joe, I will say your newer stuff. I mean, I, I even like the old stuff, but your new stuff, especially with, I think the Dr. Orocha, um, before and afters, great technology, you know, really, really amped it up, you know, the, the quality level, you know, I was saying, and yeah. listen, and, and it's important. I'm not like, for example, you know, I'm, I'm not going with Dr. Orocha. I think he's a great surgeon, but just seeing that, you know, it, it shows, you know, it does give uh, quality hope. Let me say two guys that listen. Yeah. Can you get something done the right way? Of course. Now, again, the, you know, with realistic expectations, you know, you, you, there is something out there, but it's, it's cause I do think, and I, I, I one thing, maybe it's a suggestion and don't take this the wrong way. Um, but again, I'm a millennial. I, I have a different perspective from shit. 
I think there is. The, the thing is, you guys are two hard-heading uh, truthers, if, if that makes sense. It's, it's, yeah. You're telling the truth, and I could bear with that, but it's, when, when, you, when it gets so too real like that, like don't have a hair transplant, to me, I fucking love it. But a lot of people fucking don't, you know, because it's just <laughs> they don't want to hear it. They, no, seriously, well, that's they don't what I'm saying before. They, they, they want to hear the, the 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 hope that's actually nothing more than BS. Like, why don't uh, we do a hat? So how would it, why, why don't we title like free hair transplants? No, you know, or hair I loss cure. In all seriousness, I I do think there is a, a middle ground. I do think there there could be a middle ground. I don't know what it is. I'm not a marketer, but I do think there is a middle ground where we can catch obviously the, the people who are hopeful where they, you know, if they're in the right scenario and they do the right things, take the right medications, there is an option for them. And then there's also the people who are, you know, like me, who, who I like it, how it is, they would also be interested. So I do think there's a middle ground. Um, my, I don't know what it is. That, but... my, my challenge with that is that when, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. And it, I mean, I agree in principle, but the reality is that when you start talking about, um, you know, different treatments that are out there that are, you know, that Spencer and I consider to be fringe treatments like this onion, onion juice bullshit. It's like, that's not even a fringe <laughs> treatment. That, that, not even a fringe treatment. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. But when we start talking about that, we, we, we can't, we can't do so in a, in a hopeful manner because, you know, to tell the truth means that you can't, you can't walk that line yet. You have to just tell it how it is. And even well, if we were to try to walk that line, eventually it would, it would get to the point where it's like, you know, a lot of people will say they like it, but in reality, it, it just doesn't work. Once we get to that point, then we're letting the viewer down. Like they're, they're feeling deflated. They're, they're, they're feeling disappointed. Oh shit. There, there really isn't anything out there except for this drug that makes my, my, um, uh, Drunk shrink. Uh, gives me a function or my junk shrink or whatever. Um, brain fog, you know, all these side effects or surgery that I can't afford unless I go to Turkey. It's like, you know, th there's no upside to it. Well, I, I do. Well, listen, I think you're spot on about the onion juice horse shit. Horse shit needs to be called out as horse shit. I, I, I give you that. I mean, that's just, that's I mean, snake words. venom or snake, <laughs> you know, you know, no, but no, seriously, that I'm with you. But you know what I think? I think even your, your, and I know you, this is recent, um, but the, the, the before and afters of, you know, even during the process of that you did with Dr. Rocha, um, I mean, even the, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I did, you know, I came across Hattigan Hair Clinic because obviously you guys know my story. I went to a different clinic, didn't have the surgery, was let down, was mm -hmm. disappointed, you know, and I came across Hattigan Hair from Joe's videos and I did my diligent research after I had, a, you know, two consultations with them. Um, and then I spoke to some other people that, and you know what? I found it and I, and I felt, I feel really confident to go to them. And, uh, I do intend to go with them pro in, um, in November, you know, I already gave him my deposit. Mm -hmm. And I think the Arocha stuff also, I think if we even see more of, you know, cause, cause I do think people need to see that hope. And at the end of the day, some people just can't be helped. You know, they, they just can't be helped because they're not realistic. They're just not mentally, um, there. You know, you could, you could, what do they say? You could take a horse to the, to the river, but you, you know, but you can't make you a horse to water you can't make drink. And, and what you're saying, I, right. I understand it. But the, the other problem is that the majority of people that are watching YouTube are younger men, like not, right. it's like younger men that are you know into the bro science stuff to begin with. Uh, you also find them on, on the, the subreddits about hair loss and, and, you know, all the, all these different treatments that are completely useless. Um, it's, it's challenging, but, um, look, I, I, am a strong believer in, in my career over the past five years is, is show me this, that when you stick to your, stick to your guns, you try to do things the right way, it, it'll be slower, but people will notice and you will grow. My own personal business yes. is growing because of it. it and, and I'm actually, I, I actually appreciate the way I'm, uh, uh, it's growing because it's manageable. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've got more doctors applying and I'm turning, I'm turning down doctors. Like I, I've turned, like Sp Spencer's talked about this with himself before, but now f for myself, it's to the point where I've turned down enough business from, you know, doctors that want to be a part of what I do that would make some people cry. And it, it's <laughs> tough. Like I, I, I had, I had two, um, two contact me last week and I'm scratching my head. I'm like, 
you know, I'm looking at their stuff online and looking at their information. And I'm like, it looks good, but I, I see, I see that they're not using microscopes. I can see it in the hairlines, like plain as day. It's like, would I go there? I, I can't say that I would. And, uh, you know, send an email back. It's like, Hey, have you guys looked into lo using microscopes, try to help them improve their, their practice. And, um, but yeah, look, I mean, no one, no one comes out, it, you know, first place by doing, doing things the right way. It just doesn't happen. I mean, right. you, you, you know, like these other guys that are selling snake oil, you know, they're growing right. faster. They, they've got, you know, they're, they're making money on their channels. I mean, good for them, but, well, uh, but you're, you're limiting yourself to YouTube. I mean, I, I have to disagree. I'm in first place. I don't give a oh, fuck. Uh, stop it. No, I mean, honestly, I disagree. I disagree with that. I, I think that, you know, there, you can do the right thing and be, and be in first place. You may not be in first place in the eyes of social media. Okay. Let me, let me rephrase it then. Uh, you can get to first place, but you won't be the first one to get there. Like you'll eventually get there. Right. As everything falls by the wayside, but well, in other words, well, 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 Joe, the, the, this way, I'm. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry, you're, you're the delay on my end. Go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say it's like uh, you know to to finish the race. Um, you know, you're you're not gonna do it by uh, doing it the right way. I, I remember when I, I was I had a, a conversation with Alan Feller in Long Island. He was talking about a a, a message form and a guy that. Uh, at the time was, he was a real sprinter. And yep. I'm just like, you know, slow and steady wins the race, my man. Slow and steady wins the race. I don't need to cut corners. Well, I will say this. Yeah. If, if we come across, if, if you're right, I think, you know, um, you know, the ball truth in itself won't, if it's not going to be the first thing that comes there. But if it, to me, if you have gotten there, that means that you're doing okay, meaning that you're doing enough research that, you know, it's, you've gotten to that point. Right. You know, I do think it's, it's a, it is a good benchmark to have because, you know, do you always want to be the first, first hit there? I mean, you, you know, not necessarily, you know. So I do think if you have gotten here, it means that either you're, you're, you've done it right or you're, you're in the process of doing it the right way. So I, I do think, in all seriousness, I'm not trying to, you know, if you, it is a barometer, in my opinion. If they have come to you guys, it means that they are on the right track. So, you know, because do you even want, because all those people will just turn, or even if you are the first ones, I mean, what do we say? They're just going to not even listen because you guys are too, too, too real. And, and going back to the point that you were talking about of inviting these young guys to your show, they're not going to come because they know, first of all, the only reason why they would come to other channels is if they know they have something to gain from it, either monetary or, you know, mm -hmm. getting more followers. They know they're not going to get followers from you guys because, you know, it's, it's most of the followers here, I would like to think, are rational and, and, and non-bullshit. And um, so, so that's really why. And they would probably get chewed out. Not that you guys would be confrontational, but I, they'd probably get chewed out by the callers, by me. I'd be real with it. I'd call them and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you having well, a second and, hair and transplant? That's, and, that's the thing. And, and admittedly, like my whole idea about this, uh, it was it was just a testament to my naivety about about how these other guys are are or you know some people are operating in, in the YouTube space. And uh, the idea was, you know, let's create like this uh, this this beautiful thing of unity where everyone <laughs> that's on YouTube, it's you know in the hair loss space and working together to to help. Like I, I, I actually had the idea that I would, I'd be able to help them review the, the content that they were about to put out so I could make sure that what they're doing is accurate when it's not. Most of the time it's not. And I was stupid enough to think that they'd be like, you know, oh yeah, great. Well, you do that? Sure. Yeah. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. And yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> I, was, I don't know was, what I was thinking. Was that was just the, like, that was like, just the. Like how can you not have learned from my mistakes 15 years ago? I, cause you know, when you start starting out, I was, I was still in high school. Dude, a, true. A snake <laughs> is a snake is a snake is a snake. You know, if you try to yeah. say, you know what, let's forget about what these guys may have done in the past. Let's reach out, put out the olive branch, try to, to work together in some capacity. Never fucking works. Never, never. Gonna did, uh, it's just not, not going to happen. Bad guys are bad guys, man. That is it. 
there's a there's at one point I, I even oh by the way not out. saying that the guys you're invited to to be, you know the YouTubers are bad guys but I'm talking about you oh. know the guys who are deep in this field yeah but um I, I reached mm -hmm. out to one of these guys that's getting another hair transplant and I I told him I said dude consider your first one lucky you go back in for a second yeah. one to lower your hairline you're gonna fuck yourself up and not, not quite you know not the, the same language but um, due to YouTube uh, filters but uh, he, he thanked me and he's still going for it. And I, I see this, I'm just like, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong there. And I, I have to, I have, I, have, I have to think it's, I have to think it's for, um, partially, uh, for views because when you're documenting a procedure in near real time, you're going, you're going to get a lot of interest in that. So, um, I just hope it works out for him. There's just, I mean, I listen. I wish him well. I also, I mean, I commented on on when he announced that he's having a, a second procedure. I said, look, your your first result result obviously was was satisfactory. Um, it wasn't, you know, it was acceptable, and it's, you know, you look good, you know. And 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 he went for FQE the first time, and he's um he he's only in his thirties, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's going for FQE FQE again. And I said it for purely. Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, um, for purely for selfish reasons that, hey, you know, I mean, you already had FUE, so obviously there's already some donor damage done that, and, uh, at a young age. You're going to lose more hair if you already lost it. And, you know, I'm like, just save it, you know, save your grafts uh, until you really need it. Obviously, no one really needs surgery, but you, but you know what I'm talking about in the general, you know, sense that just save right. it. And you're already limited in what you can get, but... You know, it's just not, it, it's just not, some people are just not mentally, you know, ready. I mean, listen, the first thing I, I loved about my, my, and it's not a plug, obviously I'm not paid by them. I haven't even had surgery with them yet with Hatting and Heron and other clinics that I was considering. Um, first thing, you know, Dr. Merson who asked me, listen, have you tried shaving your head? And I was taken aback. I really was. That was the first time I was asked uh -huh. by any, any hair transplant uh, doctor, I mean, obviously this was from the doctor, but I mean, consultant, any person, no one ever asked me that before. He's like, straight up, have you tried shaving your head? Head? I'm like, I actually did once for for a, d a different reason, but he's like, and you don't like it? He's like, I actually think you should shave it because you have a good, you know, shaved head, and you know, that, like, dude, I'm like, dude, don't you want to fucking make this money? Like, don't you want to, you know, a patient? You know, that's what I'm yeah. thinking in my head, but. You know, it, it, but it doesn't, majority of the people aren't going to be that way, you know? And, and eventually we talked and, you know, we had this, he did my consult. Well, he's like, well, I think you're an appropriate, I think you're a great candidate um, if you do things the right way. But, you know, it's just some people aren't mentally there. And that's why I do think with this particular YouTuber, I do think he, I do think he means well, um, but I'm not saying that he's right. I don't think he's right at all, uh, generally, but because of the fact that he – usually the snakes are usually the people who know the right information but won't give it to their followers or other people. Um, but I just don't think even he has the right information, and he thinks what he's doing is right. And he thinks – he may actually believe this shit. Well, how saying. can you not have the right information? You don't think he watches this show? Well, I don't think he does. I really don't think he does because, Spencer, if he did – he would not be doing what he's doing to himself. That's all I'm going to say. No one wants to even, – even, listen, especially hair loss guys, yeah, he, he may get more followers. Look, he's, only, he's, only in his, he's only in his 30s. You know, his brain is barely formed at this point. Um, that's just the way that it is. So he may he's, just think that we're – You're talking about nine hair transplants. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He may, be, he, 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 may be, he may be just thinking these are just two old bitter fucks. Yeah, he, he may be thinking that and he and again, I do think there's also the concept of of with millennials. And I think just not even just with millennials, because my cousin, you know, he's a lot older than I am. He heard that 30 year bullshit and he went for it. And uh, I mean, listen, I I actually think the work was decent. The, the You know, he hasn't grown out yet. I do think the placement in itself was OK. I'm hoping it, it turns out at least satisfactory. But I do think there's this concept of, well, there's newer technology. Um, there's newer uh, things. Things are better now than they than they ever were. I think that's just the general consensus amongst people that 
you know, we've come at, you know, such a long way with technology that this has to have getting better. And, and there is a truth where I do think this is the best time to, you have some of the best, surgeons in the world but you also have some of the worst ever i would so, say i would say that i would story. say that we are not at the best time at all by by any means shape or form i mean there are more guys who are doing it and there are more guys who are there there are more guys who have taken it seriously but um a lot of these guys still don't have enough time on tissue uh there are only a handful of guys who are really truly experts when it comes to um FUE hair transplants. And I would say that a lot of technicians have more experience than the doctors that you may be even thinking about. Yeah, no, that's, I, I, I do agree. And yeah. well, maybe I'm only, I'm not phrasing it right, but I do think, I do think there are quality options there, but with that, it's a double-edged sword that there's a lot of obviously even more bad options out there. I mean, I, Joe, I know you, I know you went to Turkey. Um, Listen, I've been to South Asia. Every other mall and 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 street has a hair has a hair transplant clinic. Yeah, you know, and and yeah. it, it, it's a fucking machine. You know, it's horrible. They'll have they'll it's have just, rows of of clinics that are advertising stem cell hair transplants in India. What the fuck? Yeah. Well, exactly. listen, listen I, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I want, you know, I want to listen to if you guys keep going. No, we're, listen, we're going. Great we're, show as always. It's 4.43, but thanks, man. Well, listen, uh, you know, obviously, Millennial Mo, give him Millennial advice. Um, you know, uh, you know, it may be of some value. It may not be. But, but listen, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I think what you guys are doing great. I'm just trying to help. Well, Millennial Mo, I, I think it is actually of, of use. And I think that the key is we do have to put more content out there, Joe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I do too. So, Joe's I mean, doing his shit. Joe is doing his shit. Joe is doing his shit. And he, he's, he's, I really, I, listen, man, I really like it. I, I'm really, I, again, I, I, I do feel Dude, like I'm in a better let me, place. Let me now. tell you the, the, the suffering I go through. I have to wake up every day at the crack of noon. I got to take <laughs> my dog for a walk. I, I got to, I got to <laughs> suffer through sunshine and 70 degree weather out in the park for an hour. Like, do you think anyone can just do this? And I got to come back in. Yes. I got, I got to think about taking a shower, you know, should I do this today? That's, 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 that's the hell that is my life working from home. And then I might turn on my computer and read, read a couple of emails. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I wish for that. I wish I had that kind of, um, mental freedom which i do i I'm, i have the i have the freedom to do that if i want because i do work from home but at the same time i don't have the mental freedom to do that because i i am up early every morning i do take the dog out for a walk in the park but that's like that's 7 30 in the morning and then i am in my office and i am pounding out stuff behind the scenes for clinics i work with uh writing articles um and and a lot of it is trying to come up with a, a good idea for my next video. I'm the creative process for me is really tough. It's like, it, it's really tough, but, um, well, why don't you and Mo get a room? It's almost happy hour. What does it have to, what does it have to do with getting a room? <laughs> True. Listen, I, I know Spence, I know what you were trying to go, go with, but listen, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, obviously not with me, but, but anybody, you know, I, I do think there's a lot of, and I think your approach to these guys were, well, reaching out to some of these YouTubers, I think that otherwise is a great, great idea. Obviously, that won't happen with, with you know, these select few YouTubers. But I, listen, I do think you guys are doing it the right way. And I do think you guys are putting out enough content generally. It's just... You know, I actually just, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I don't. I mean, we are, uh, the, 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 the amount of content that I could put out on different resources and cut these two-hour shows into segments where people actually be interested and they're titled and that they're, and then they're, um, whatchamacallit, um, uh, what is it called? Not, what, what, is, what is that called, Joe? They do show like, notes. Oh, show notes. You know, where there's separate, separate show notes and... You know, that could all be done. I just need to get an intern or, or someone in here to make that happen because I don't have the time to do it myself. 
Yeah. Well, listen, don't beat yourself up also because I think and, – and, and now that I think about what I'm saying, I, I also think that's also the impossible where I don't think – generally, if you ask me, when it comes to quality content and quantity, quantity is always obviously lower shit, selling snake venom is or snake oil, whatever the fuck it is. It, you're always going to obviously make more. You're going to lose out in, ter- in terms of the number of content or video because – this is horseshit, and good shit will take time of high quality. So that is a, that's just the price that comes with putting something of high quality, that it will take time, and it won't be as much as, 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 you know, as that. I mean, you know, good artists don't come out with, you know, albums every six months. You know, Michael Jackson didn't come out with, our, you know, albums every, till every five years. You know, and, and you know, the, the, exactly. And that's when I'm, but you have shitty artists all the time that have, you know, albums, um, you know, every, every year or so. So, I do think you guys are, are on the right thing, and quality, quantity, quality will take time. Quantity doesn't. So. Well, Mo, I appreciate it. Millennial Mo, we will talk to you next time. <laughs> we will. There's All right, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Good talking to you Bye. always. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm exhausted. I have to eat. Mother Shabobu says Joe also looks like Hank Azaria. Not bad. Hank Azaria from like, I don't know, 1995 or today? Because <laughs> that's, there's a big difference there. See, the guy still looks, he, the, guy's in, the guy is fucking jacked. He is, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, Joe, give out the websites, please. The websites are... And before I tell you who they are, I'm going to tell you why I'm telling you about who they are. They are websites of like-minded people that uh, believe in our message that uh, surgery is a last resort and um, they don't believe in the snake oil. And these are forums uh, where patients share their experiences and, of course, clinics share their results. Um, the first one we'll talk about is hairlossexperiences.com. It is a UK forum, but uh, international presence. Lots of doctors from all over the world share their results, and lots of patients from around the world share their experiences. The great thing about this website is it's run by a guy who is also a repair patient himself, and he works so hard behind the scenes to help other repair patients as well. That's hairlossexperiences.com. Check them out. We've also got bellycapelli.forumfree.it. It's the hair hair transplant website with a funny name because it is Italian. Uh, it's run by a very good friend of ours. Uh, I've personally known him for many, many years, another repair patient. Uh, Belly Capelli is a great website because the, the user community is so active. And um, again, clinics sharing their results and interacting with patients and patients sharing their experiences. That's bellycapelli.forumfree.it. And finally, we've got international dash, excuse me, international dash hairlossforum.com is the French hair loss and hair restoration website. And just like the others, clinics sharing results, patients sharing experiences, and it's all in French, but any modern browser will translate it for you. So check them out. That's that. That was very nice. Thank you. HairTransplantMentor.com is Joe Tillman's personal website. Uh, Please subscribe to Joe's feed or Joe's YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash HairTransplantMentor. Don't forget to like this program. Don't forget to ring that bell so that you can get notified when we are live. Um, Subscribe to us on iTunes. There will be stuff uh, up this weekend. Uh, both of this week's shows are going to be up. Um, so please take the time to subscribe uh, to The Ball Truth on iTunes. Also, you might as well sign up to theballtruth.com. Just put your email address in there. We do not sell email addresses. Not yet, at least. I'm just kidding. It'll never happen. It has not happened in the last 20 years. Um, as far as you know, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he's just kidding. He really is. But... You know, it definitely helps. So take the time. You will get notified when new segments come up on The Ball Truth. Uh, The American Hair Loss Association, that's AmericanHairLoss.org. If you are considering surgical hair restoration, that is the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. Uh, Check them out. And if you want to interact with other hair loss sufferers besides on this program, 
check out our message forum, which is baldtruthtalk.com. Until next time, be strong. God bless. I don't want to spill that beer. And thank you so much for listening. Have a good night. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that would be splendid. Thank you. Good night.